Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 237 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? Uh, real quick plug, my graphic novel is complete. Uh, check the link in the description, and you can purchase it from Amazon. This week, the team reviews Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. Uh, here's the synopsis. Now in his fifth year at Hogwarts, Harry learns that many in the wizarding community do not know the truth of his encounter with Lord Voldemort. Cornelius Fudge, Minister of Magic, appoints his toady, Dolores Umbridge, as defense against the dark arts teacher, for he fears that Professor Dumbledore will take his job, but her teaching is deficient and her methods cruel. So, <clears throat> so Harry prepares a group of students to defend the school against a rising tide of evil. All right, uh, you want to go first, Emerson? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm going to give this a win. I'm a little cooler on this than I remember being. I remember really liking Order of the Phoenix. Now, I didn't read the books, um, but I remember that this was like the one where it got like a little more adult and they were like fighting the bad guys. And that held true. And I still, I still enjoyed it. I thought there was a lot of good acting. I thought there were some interesting special effects. I thought the story was interesting, but this time I did start seeing like a little bit of like, eh, that's a weird choice or why is this happening? This seems overly convoluted. And I don't know if it comes from the book directly or not, but it's still a win for me. And I think that's partly because I just really like these long form stories and like seeing characters like, changing but i I'm, i don't like it as much as i liked uh goblet of fire i've heard you've read the books right yeah but i haven't read them since middle school so it's been a while emerson i don't understand how you can like this if you haven't read the books because it's it's the story and you have to understand i've watched this movie so many times these movies so many times like i know the story of the movies now repeatedly and like it's just like it's just, I like long form, multiple movies, like see characters over time. So I think that these are not good movies. Like, even if you like the movies, I don't, I don't think we've seen one that was actually a good movie on its own. They, they leave a lot on the table or on the floor, I should say. And they, uh, I don't know, the, the pace is just so truncated. I, I don't, I get to, to me, I'm like, if you don't know the backstory to fill in the gaps yourself, it, it's, I don't know how you could follow it. Well, that's the thing. I, it, for me, I've seen the movie so many times. Like, I don't remember the first time I saw any of these, like none of them. I've seen them so, especially these later ones, like Goblet of Fire on, I've seen them so many times that the story, like it already exists to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like nothing is surprising. I, I only, I never watched any of them more than once. Hmm. I watched them all. And to the be time. honest, I think that they suck compared to the book. Like, if you were going to compare it, like straight, I know most people say that this is no exception. I think that these movies are absolutely suck compared to the book, with small improvements here or there, which is like more like J.K. Rowling. What were you? Why did you write it that way? Like, you're so, so weird. what were you? What do you give this? Well, let me let's hear Everett's uh, okay review. Um, for me, I'm going to give this a win as well. I actually really like this movie, and I'm I'm basing that review purely off of just like i have like i said i haven't read the book in a while so I'm, I'm basically basing it on pretending i haven't read the book and only seen the movie so i really like the movie i think it has really good casting uh I, I think dolores umbridge is probably one of the best harry potter villains out there and i think i forget i forget the name of the woman who plays her but she's you said she's in the crown Melda something yeah she's gonna play the queen yeah i really like her i think she's perfect i'm excited for that um <laughs> And I, I know a lot of people seem to agree that this movie, this and the next one, I think, are they think are like a pretty like boring set. Like it's not that great, but I, I don't know. I, I really like it. I, I like the ending. Wait, why do you bring uh, up the next ones? Well, okay. Because um, if, if I remember correctly, I've heard people say that this one, Order of the Phoenix, and the next one, Half-Blood Prince, are like two sort of boring-esque movies. I don't know why my light turned off. Um 
but more specifically this one, this is probably like the bottom of a lot of people's lists, but I, I really liked it. Yeah. I think that this is my favorite book so far. Uh, I think it, because I, you know, I was a kid when I read Goblet of Fire and like, you look back and the fact that he's clearly been like the invitation or whatever thing has been tampered with and he's in the tournament, even though he shouldn't be. And like, everyone was just like, we don't know what to do. Like, it's so stupid. <laughs> and then also like the challenges are also kind of weird and bizarre. And um, like, you really think about like how there doesn't seem to be, there's no girls in Bulgaria that go to school. Like I, it's an all boys school. So what about the girls school? Do they all go to the French school? Like where are the boys in France? Like you really start to, if you think about it at all, it, the whole thing is just like bizarre. Um, although I love the ending of the fourth one, but I didn't like it in the movie. I thought the movie didn't do it justice how scary it was. Um, this one was also, I think this is one of the best books that I've read in this series. No, I, it is the best one. I'm trying to think like, the problem with the other books is they're either short, like the first two, and the, I, I think the shorter ones are, are better, but like the third and fourth one, at the end, there's just like this, like, I, I swear it's like a 50 page, or like a 20 minute discussion where they're like, you thought it was like this, but really it was this, this whole time. Like, and it's just like really like carrying a heavy load to kind of like explain what the plot actually was. And you're just like, wow, this is a lot of talking about all the twists and turns that, I don't know. So I think those are, that's, those are weaker parts of the story. This one didn't have that. It does have, a, an ending where Dumbledore like cries and confesses his love basically for Harry. And uh, it's not in the movie, right? No. Yeah. No. It's not in the movie. They have like a man talk, but they don't have like a, I love you talk. Yeah. They have an, I love you talk. <laughs> and yeah. Um, so anyway, I give it a win. I enjoyed it. But one thing I'm certain of is that these are bad movies. Like uh -huh. this should be a four episode miniseries for each book. And even the shorter ones, like you could add more stuff to it. I would change certain things. Like it's time for a reboot, I think, to be honest, because the oh, only that's thing, controversial. The only, the only thing that these movies actually give me are like the music and a visual reference for certain things. Like the characters in my head now look, which by the way, was not essential to enjoying the story. Um, because like I, people loved Harry Potter way before they ever saw a Harry Potter movie. So mm -hmm. the movies add like a visual, okay, we know what Hogwarts looks like in our heads now. Even though I don't think it really makes any sense, but, um, and, the, and the music. Um, beyond that, I don't think that these offer anything that the book doesn't offer. Except maybe they cut down some of uh, J.K. Rowling's weird ideas. Cause they, they literally can't do it <laughs> like in the time that they have. So they, they're forced to cut it. Um, okay. So let's go into spoilers. All right. I like, so in the book, when he, when Harry and Dudley get attacked by dementors, mm -hmm. um, I thought that part of the movie was fine. I thought that the dementors seemed a lot scarier because they didn't like form dark clouds they, it says like the, the lights of the world got shut off. Like everything around them went dark. Like they were st they, standing They also got a redesign from the last time we saw them. And I actually wrote in my notes that I prefer this version than the last version. Is it because the cloak is like over their faces? And they stuff? looked like Nazgul the last time we saw them. This right. one, they looked more like demons almost. But the, the like thing was like wraiths. over their head, right? Yeah. They had, yeah. Like, they had a hood. Now it's just they, like their face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I do prefer that. I did notice that. And I was like, am I remembering wrong? Because I, I remember in the ride also um, at Universal Studios, they have this version of the face. And, mm -hmm. I, was, and I was always confused about that. Um, so I thought all that was good. They do a good job of kind of cutting straight to the, um, the hearing. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. in the book, he, he, gets, he gets taken away. Uh, I forget exactly. Like some does he take the night bus? Something happens. He gets taken to Grimald Place. Oh, I think the order comes. Yeah, the order comes here too, but they, they don't like yeah, escort. Exactly, they don't like exactly. like a yeah, police escort. 
they come and like to be honest in the book i thought kingsley shacklebolt was going to be a lot cooler like in the book he seems like a suave young like powerful uh wizard this one he was kind of like an older like kind of like a doofus a little bit but then in the book he also he also gets his ass kicked by bellatrix Mm. so i uh I don't know. I'm kind of like neutral on him now. I, in the book, I was like, this guy, this guy seems cool. He had like a shaved head and he, they said he was like gigantic muscular and had like a booming voice and barely spoke. And, and I was like, this guy's cool. Uh, in the book, he, I don't know. He was like, he didn't even have a British accent, did he? He said like, no, he had like one really. line. Dumbledore's uh, got style. Which, which in the book is said by a portrait. It's mm-hmm. not him. Um, anyway, we'll get to that. So, he gets to the hearing and I felt like it's just an interesting idea because there's so much that's relevant to today. Like there's corruption in the government. So like Cornelius Fudge has his people, but in the end, Harry gets off because the majority does the right thing. And I'm like, uh, realistically, like all the Republicans vote against like the interest of their people simply because it's the Republican party and they refuse to help the other side. So if Fudge really had as much power as like they're saying he does. It seemed like Harry would have no chance. Like they would 100% be like uniform, except for maybe a few. Like we, we, you don't get to see any of that politics. Like is everyone there in support of Fudge? Like there's none of that. Yeah. And it doesn't. It's not like a plot hole or anything. But I just but thought they, like that's a good segue because one of the things that I've always complained about in these movies, and I guess it's probably from the books and maybe you can shed some light on this is just how fucking fragile and ineffective any level of authority in the wizarding world is like, there's just, there's like, they have no ability to do anything like to the, the point that to the point that it's absurd. Like, like people just break out and like take over in like five minutes. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not really acknowledged in the book. But to be honest, in the book, they give it a little more breathing. So it doesn't seem like they're so weak. But like, if you just think about it, it's like, okay, but who, like, is so Dumbledore, Dumbledore feels like he needs to be at Hogwarts. He could have been the Minister of Magic. It says that in the book, like everybody wanted him to. But he chose not to so that he could go to Hogwarts. For what I don't know. Yeah, because if he was Minister of Magic, this should have been dealt with by now. If like he was really against Voldemort, he could have like everything he does so. proves that he knows what to do better than Fudge. So basically, you need to have a minister that will listen to Dumbledore. But why would a man of that much power want to like listen to the headmaster at the school? Like, so it just seems like Dumbledore should be the minister then. If it's if it's that important, like if it's a matter of life and death. Yeah. You can't just be like, I'd rather be a teacher. It's like, no, you're saying you're the guy. So when there's a problem, you're going to show up and start telling the guy how to do his job. Like, how is that a plan? Why didn't you just take the job? I remember, dude, my mom is the worst, man. We went to, uh, we went to Paris. My sister had a friend who was getting married. They were French and it was a Persian wedding. And my mom had become ordained somehow to do Persian Persian wedding. I don't remember how or why. So my mom's like, they're like, you guys come to our wedding and do this and we'll pay you for the ceremony, whatever. And my mom said, okay. And I don't know, you know, I was like younger, so I didn't fully understand their arrangement. I just understood that we were going to the wedding and that my mom was part of the ceremony. And I was like, this should be interesting. (laughs) Um, So we go to meet them like the second day we get there, it's like a week away from the wedding or something. And they're all just sitting, talking about the wedding casually. And my mom's like, oh, I'm not doing that. That's crazy. And I, I, you know, I wasn't in on the conversation, but I remember thinking like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like you just said that for reference, I don't talk to my mom anymore, but um, (laughs) if if people are wondering like, what the hell she, um, she basically backed out right there and everyone was like, they were really nice about like, like, wait, she just said she's not doing the ceremony and we're getting married in less than a week. And like, my mom has no fucking shame, man. And then we get to the wedding. We're still going to the wedding somehow. And they found someone else to do it. And the dude is doing it and he's doing it wrong, maybe. And my mom starts correcting him. Like she keeps interrupting him to tell him that he's doing it wrong. 
and and I remember walking over to her and, and I was like I was like maybe 18 or something and I remember being like shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like we're sick of you stop talking I, and yeah she, that was bad I forgot I completely forgot about that <laughs> what <laughs> brought that back Dumbledore telling Fudge like you need to do this and you need to do that. <laughs> why don't you be the fucking minister then you douchebag like what did you do to society you fucking <laughs> <laughs> like go do the job you know how to do it people are Jesus dying fucking Christ. <laughs> but he's a moron like, he is but the fact that you licked that to your mom, <laughs> I just imagine you walking into double door he's like you need to shut the fuck up <laughs> well in this case Fudge is I mean to be honest like no one knew how the ceremony was supposed to work so the guy doing it wrong like, doesn't matter that's not the legal part it's legal in France they're going to do the French thing but Nobody knew the difference. So like, I, that's why I had to stop her. But with Dumbledore, it's like, dude, if you know what needs to be done and you knew that Voldemort would return as he admits at the end of the book, I don't remember in the movie, then like, what the fuck? Why wouldn't... Anyway. Um, <laughs> well, you'd the think they'd is... have like some form of emergency powers, right? <laughs> like, like what's it's based on the British government. Don't the British government have like... To so usurp it... the minister? Yeah. And they, you said they had the majority to do the right thing, so you don't you don't see or hear any of that. That's something. If you made a TV show that was four episodes, you could see some more of like the politics behind the ministry. So, so just to be clear with that criticism, you're saying you think that these movies need more time to breathe to create yeah, their story, like double the time. <laughs> okay, so because that's an interesting type of criticism. Because usually, you and this podcast we're talking about we, we, this need this can be shorter. And so it's interesting that the criticism here is that you need more time to tackle this. Yeah, because the one thing that you could say that J.K. Rowling does the best is the universe, mm -hmm. the atmosphere, the magical world. And to like see Harry with his friend and spending time. And there's so many, like my favorite parts of the book are when she's talking about the passage of time. And I think I've said this before, where like, like, it, like they're taking their owls and um, uh, they're doing the divination test. That's not in the movie. But Ron, like, he sees, like, an old man with, a, with like, a crooked nose. And he reports it to the teacher. And the teacher is, it's his reflection in the bowl that Ron <laughs> reported. And the guy's just, like, like, basically just called him an ugly old man. Like, that's the kind of stuff that should be in this story. And you take all that out because it's in a movie. You have to cut it all out. And, yeah, it, it seems like they're on a two-movie track, like, for two movies, you'll see that they have that over explaining ending and then mm -hmm. there's like a correction. And so you can see here now that the movies are like the books are longer. It takes about two movies for them to be like, OK, we got to do we got to break this into parts because we just can't do this. Um, and it's like at that point, it's too late, I think. Um, we'll see. I don't remember liking the seventh book, but I wonder if the two the four hours or maybe even five hours will help it. Um, I mean, you know what kind of sucks is if you're asking for a reboot, that's it's never going to happen. Because first of all, like, what do you mean it's, never? It, well, okay. it's all they do is reboots. I mean, okay, right now, within the next like 15 years, they're not going to get a reboot because no. it's, it's been too close since the last release. I don't they think so. It's been parks 20 years. dedicated to this stuff. It's been 20 years. How many times have they rebooted Spider Man? I mean, is Spider Man have, bigger than Harry Potter? Yeah. Is Batman bigger than Harry Potter? How many reboots have you seen? Yeah, but like, do you see Spider Man yeah. and Batman with their faces plastered all over a theme park? Spider Man doesn't count. He has a yeah. mask on. There could be anybody there, but you have you have Daniel Radcliffe's face. There, there's a difference between that and a guy wearing a spider mask. It, yeah, you're talking about our generation. Yeah, the next kids don't give a shit about who Daniel Radcliffe is. They don't care about Emma. In Watson. fact, they already don't care. He he talks. He's he has a Conan interview where people are trick or treating in his neighborhood. There's kids dressed up like Harry Potter who don't recognize him. Yeah, they don't know who he is. He looks like That's a freak, by the way. Like, um, you're telling me a limited series, seven, seven seasons, four episodes each, HBO streaming only, wouldn't be printing money for them right now? Okay, I, I see your point. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> I, miss, uh, maybe I overstepped, but... They 100% could do it and it would be a blockbuster. Event. I think what's more likely to block it is that what would probably happen is they try to distance themselves from J.K. Rowling. 
and that they would like like they might ruin the writing or but, like do but, story things well if it were me if i were in charge of it i would change things yeah for like sure. what i told you like i think that um voldemort in the second one should have been like pretending to be an older boy at slytherin um who gives harry advice and who confides in him and is not really a student there but harry doesn't realize till the end that he was like a fake student the whole time and uh he should be possessing harry to do his bidding mm -hmm. and because that falls right in line with what we're doing and um like in this book uh, i would have introduced love interests way earlier uh, I would have given him some more friends from other houses. At this point, the, the Slytherins are so comically evil. Yeah, that's like, that is I, true. They, they if, literally are the Inquisition stormtroopers in this. If I took I, uh, a Pottermore test and got Slytherin, I would be embarrassed because it basically says you're a Nazi, like, <laughs> like white supremacist. Like, that's what it is. I mean, there's no redeeming them. Hufflepuff is literally like, we had one good guy. <laughs> that's, and he died. Like, that's Hufflepuff. <laughs> done you don't need to know any more slytherin is like they're book smart but, but i mean the dumbest it, person in the movie is luna lovegood and and like she's a ravenclaw so there you go <laughs> like, i mean you have some good points i mean i've said it before i'm a firm believer that you can make changes to the source material so long as it benefits the story so they were to do something like that and make oh, the story sure. better than yeah and i would change like i would cut down on some of the mysterious bullshit I would have another look at the uh, wizarding tournament, maybe change some of those rules to make it make sense for Harry to be in it. And, and like usually with those where it's like, I don't want to be in it, but I have to be like just from my own writing. That's a mistake. Just rewrite the story so that Harry wants to be in it. Like it would be way easier to do it that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. They all want to be in it. Um, uh, I would definitely get rid of some of the like hints towards Dumbledore's like not his homosexuality but like his weird relationship with harry because it really does seem like there's like something going on, especially with this one here he's like literally crying saying I, I care for you too much harry like whoa easy well okay out of curiosity you know how like she just kind of came out of nowhere and said he's gay like did did she just come up with that or was she like did she actually I think like, in her mind that he was gay but like honestly you don't need to know his sexual orientation I'm I saying, like, did she write that with him being gay in mind, or did she just write that as, oh, he cares a lot about him, and then in hindsight, it looks a little bit weird now that he's gay? No, I don't think. No, I'm, I'm talking about pedophilia, not homosexuality. I yeah, don't think well, that him being gay is a problem. And uh, I don't. Yeah, think we that, have to clarify. No, but that we are like, not that's what I'm asking. I'm asking. Podcast. I'm asking. Did she write that like sappy ending? With the with the mindset of this guy is a homosexual, that's what I'm trying to convey. <laughs> no, or, what you're saying is that he's in love with Harry. That's what she, <laughs> that's what she was doing. That's what he would have said. <laughs> or was she trying? To, or was she just writing it with the mindset saying like this guy and him are like close friends and they care about this each other, so but not wait, in a gay way. What do you mean way. this guy and him? Are you talking about him and Harry? Yeah. I'm uh, saying like did she write it with the mindset saying like this that, guy that he's this is his teacher Harry? he cares yeah. about him they have yeah it's but it's a, but the way you're describing it Everett is a little rapey because he's he's like his headmaster they're not like two chums walking down the street there's no gayness in between them it's our our joke is that he gives Harry like special attention and Harry is like the template for like the, the kid that pedophiles typically target yeah we're making it up like there's no gay stuff happening <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it's like, do you think the homosexual themes were introduced yeah no, is that, it sounds like you, you're asking, you get what i'm asking right like, i'm not saying but it sounds you, you like understand why asking, i'm asking it you're asking if the if his homosexuality was prevalent when she into that scene in the with, book, yes. Yeah, but why would his homosexuality have anything to do with Harry? I mean, that I, I guess that's the point you're trying to make is that's where it starts to become like a little bit of pedophilia. No, that's the joke. That's the joke which we're making. Key's <laughs> discovering that not Everett the point. actually believes <laughs> the joke. No. I mean, I don't like if you're this woman, like, and you write that thinking like this guy's gay, that's a little weird. But if you wrote it <laughs> saying like he's not gay, he just cares a lot. And then years Ugh. later down the line, you Ugh. decide to say this guy's gay. 
going back and looking on it with that context now, it would be a little You're bit suggesting weird. that she's in love with Harry, like set, like romantically. In hindsight, though, not like in the way she wrote it. Does that make sense? Yeah, but sense? you're asking if she had written it with that intention and just yeah. never like... If yeah, she but... wrote it with the intention, then it would be much weirder than it if she didn't write it with the intention. But if she had written it with the intention, then you're saying that she wrote the intention that Dumbledore is actually a pedophile. Am I wrong? Is that the right logic, Emerson? No, you're not wrong, but... Everett stalked himself into a corner. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like, he's trying not to be wonder. I'm trying to like get in but her, he her mind a little bit. It's so weird. Dumbledore was meant to rape hair. He like, I'm just saying like this woman anime. made some weird decisions. <laughs> no, I think, I, I think she's trying to say that Dumbledore like cares for him like a father would as a replacement father. Yeah. That's what she's trying to do, but she goes a bit far that it's weird. And then we like to make up that he's actually a pedophile. He's grooming him. Yeah. That's a joke. That's always been a joke. <laughs> Even though it does line up sometimes. Like the way he cries for Harry, <laughs> you're supposed to like make, you're, it's supposed to melt your heart. I'm laughing. Cause I'm like, what the, like, <laughs> But he's not actually gay. Like, it's just, it's a weird choice by J.K. Rowling. I don't think she ever intended that to be any type of homosexual thing. Is that word frozen? <laughs> okay. No, I'm not frozen. Because I'm... <laughs> he's gay now. So... Yeah, but, but that doesn't Whenever make you're him a saying pedophile. that he's a pedophile. That's what you're saying. Then that that's she... her fault. She wrote it that way then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay, know how yeah, to properly you convey there. this. <laughs> well, Everett, you're kind of combining the gay and the pedophile together, like, a lot. You're, like, totally ignoring their, like, father-son dynamic. Because that's what's making that scene happen, not his gayness. Okay. I, I'm just going to drop it, because you're right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk myself into a corner, and it's not going to make sense, but... <laughs> Okay. He's <laughs> dropping it because he didn't, he still doesn't, he's not sure if Dumbledore is grooming it. I, I just, I guess I can't push it through my mind. Like, uh, if dude, this put, is your, like, put yourself in her shoes. Right here. Put yourself in her shoes. Be, this needs to be on next year's ism. This should be this a is, clip. We'll, we'll, we'll it's skip. classic. Clip this. Clip this. <laughs> put, put it on the yourself, Iron Put Kubrick yourself in her shoes for a minute, though. Like, back in the 90s when she Wait, wrote you're released, still arguing. <laughs> Back in the 90s when she wrote and released this, and it's... But Every, you're saying that she wrote him to be a pedophile. I'm, but that's what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> I don't think she wrote him to be gay. I think she came up with the fact that he's gay later. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's your point. Because I'm like, you're saying that he's a pedophile. And that I'm she... not, no. My, my thing I'm trying to tell you is, if she wrote, the reason why I think he's not really gay, because everyone says, like, Dumbledore's gay. She says Dumbledore's gay. I don't think that's real. Because if she wrote that, the way you're saying like how weird it sounds and all the jokes we make about him being a groomer, if she had written that with that in mind, then imagine how that would look now. Instead of going back and saying, oh, I wrote this before with another thought process in mind, but he was really gay all along. Does that make sense? You kind of went back to your original. <laughs> I your, think your what Everett's is... trying to say is that Everett believes that Dumbledore was not written with the intent to be gay. Yeah. Everett yes. believes Dumbledore just came out and said that later. And no, that, that wasn't. She, oh. she was, I think she was trying to please people and said. He's yes. <laughs> Dumbledore's ghost came back in and is like, by the way, I was gay the whole time. <laughs> yeah. He, well, there's a, there's a lot Rowling of things just that she did. It, there's a lot they, of things that she did that I think yeah. fit into that same vein. Like, you ever hear the thing, like, someone asked her on Twitter, like, were there any Jewish wizards? And just out of nowhere, she goes, yes, Anthony Goldstein, third year wizard. That person didn't exist. She just came up with that out of nowhere. Yeah, but she's so good at world building that I believe that there are things that she didn't put in the book that in her mind exist. Yeah, she's like, I'll get the Asian name Cho Chang. I'll get get the Jews. I thought thought the goblins were supposed to be the Jews. Isn't that isn't that a criticism? Uh, yeah, there's a criticism that it's anti-Semitic because they're big-nosed, sh- like small bankers. Like they're not specifically Jews, but like yeah. there's some caricature elements. Yeah, in them. but she has that all over the place. But that's also just like society, like the yeah. greedy little goblin. Like yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it, but whatever. I mean, there are no Middle Eastern people. I I'll wonder right what you would. One sec. 
I wonder what she would have done with some Middle Eastern characters. I mean, yeah, if, if they were to make like an HBO series, I'd like to see a little bit more diversity. That's that'd be a change I'd want to see. Because there are like, I mean, you you saw the Indian girls, the twins, mm-hmm. but um, there's like more in the UK. Pakistanis, yeah. I think there's a lot of Pakistanis in the UK. Um, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> oh yeah. So the other, the other, I, this is where I saw my first point. The other Sorry, thing I that derailed I, it with my weird speech. <laughs> no, no, no. So they, um, so they say that the like. Like the ministry corruption, I felt like was unrealistic having lived through the, the government that we have now. The mm-hmm. other part was how the, half of them didn't believe Harry. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that was also like, that was more realistic because people not to believe Harry, it's like, how could you not believe Harry? But now just you just accept like a certain percentage of the population is just going to be in denial about anything. Like I mean, those should have been like, no, it didn't happen. No. But but then you got idiots like what's his face the like C, was his name Seamus or Seamus she, no not Seamus Seamus um you have idiots like him they were all watching the end of the of the tournament they watched him come back with Cedric dead and yet he still yeah, somehow he's believes he's a kid dude yeah but this he's is just a, parroting what his parents say but this is the thing that is a plot hole I think because how did he die like either Voldemort did it or Harry did it. Didn't they think that it was serious? Didn't they end up blaming Sirius for all the stuff Voldemort was doing? Uh, th- that they was blamed him for like the the breakouts at prison the and like, disappearances and stuff. Yeah, I guess maybe that. I don't think that was said in the book that it was serious. They don't really explore it. Like who had? Because even Harry says to Umbridge, he's like, "So, so Cedric Diggory dropped out of his own accord then," and she's like, uh, "What did she say?" I don't know Cedric Diggory's says. death was a tragic accident or something along those lines. Something like they never say what they think caused it, which would kind of clear up. They, they could have said anything, to be honest, and, and a certain population would have believed it. He hit his head running through the maze and somehow died. I, I, I don't know how you guys feel, but I thought that Emma Watson was pretty bad in this movie. I, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't think she was as good as she was before, but I think part of that also is her character. Like she's not as prominent as she has been because there's a lot of other characters being put in. She's plenty prominent in the book. This is just another flaw of it being a two hour movie. But um, I thought that her performance, especially like her, her, her dialogue was very mumbly. Um, like when she says she, when she says loony love good, I thought that was a, such a cringy scene. in the <laughs> Luna. Yeah, she says Looney Lovegood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then pauses and she's like, and then goes, uh, I mean, Luna. And it was like supposed to be awkward, but it was actually just cringy. Like I felt cringy for Emma Watson. I was like, wow, that was that was a hard one to watch. <laughs> like your delivery on that was really bad. I didn't even, she said it so fast that you don't even hear the Looney part. Yeah, that's just like Luna. That's when they're in the carriage with her, right? And they're going mm-hmm. up to Hogwarts. And I don't remember her dialogue. Her her dialogue, this whole movie is like really, really fast. At her delivery. And I don't remember that being a thing in the previous ones where like I could barely catch what she was saying. Um, she's also like shifting around her eyes the entire time that she's talking. And every yeah, time she I kind of noticed that a little she's bit. She's like lurching forward. Like, yeah, like, you're right. Like, like what is that? Like, I don't I, know. Yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, I think, I think what it was is that I think this was around the time they became like self-aware as actors and not just kids like on the set of Harry Potter. Like they were always actors, but they really weren't aware of it. Yeah. Um, but it, like if you watch the uh, the reunion thing. I watched that. Actually. Around like Goblet of Fire, it. they start to talk about like they were on set with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gary Oldman. Yeah. And, you know, all these other famous people. And they started to like get into the craft of acting. And I think they came back with the fifth one trying to like knock it out of the park, especially since it was a little bit of a darker movie. And I don't think that they did. <laughs> um, I thought Ron was okay, but he had barely anything to do. Um, and I thought Daniel Radcliffe was also okay. But yeah. Um, so like, there's so many things in the book. Like you don't, I think one thing Emerson, like you don't realize how much is actually not in the book. I I'm sorry, believe, not in the movie. Yeah, and I believe you 100% because I've known people who've read the books who are like, oh, the movies leave so much out. But it's not even like, okay, you cut it out, out, but you still got to the same ending. No, it's not like that. For example, 
you know how Dolores Umbridge suddenly makes herself high Inquisitor? Yeah. Okay, she does it because she argues with McGonagall, right? Yeah. Okay, but that's like a very small argument that they have that she said in like, okay, I'm in charge. In the book, in Quidditch, they they beat Slytherin and they get into a fight with Draco Malfoy, Fred and George and Harry, and they get into a fight with Malfoy and his goons or whatever, and they punch each other. And because of the violence, Umbridge uses that to become High Inquisitor. Okay. So one, you kind of see like Harry's like, he's like stressed, like he, he's breaking. He, they keep saying he has a temper and that he's out of control. And this leads to him being like uh, people not believing him and thinking that he's crazy. And these, these are things that you kind of need, I think. Um, aside from that, no Quidditch. No Quidditch at all. The whole movie. Also, yeah, they kind of just play off his anger as him like becoming evil, sort of like with his brain connected to Voldemort. Yeah. Uh, so there's a whole lot of like, do we believe Harry and look at his behavior and he's acting irregular and people are coaching him. Like you've got to stop. You have to don't get mad at her and blah, blah, blah. He gets detention that goes on for a long time. Like he goes to detention for weeks that he's cutting his hand and he refuses to say anything, which is kind of stupid, but also like pig headed and brave the way that he is. Um, here's another thing. Like, remember how in Azkaban, like, the dog barked at him, even though it was his ally. Yeah. And it was like supposed to be scary. Here's another one where they're talking to Sirius with his head in the fire and Sirius is like, someone's coming. Well, Sirius is at Grimal place, so he can talk to whoever he wants. So it must be someone on their end that's coming and that he has to leave because he can't be seen. Except when he leaves, nobody comes in. So they're just like adding this like urgency, like someone's coming. No, no one came. Like, how do you forget? To, like, there's no one there. Um, what do you mean? He he's talking about someone's coming to Harry's. Like he, he's saying he has to get out of the fire because someone's coming into the room. You hear into the room like, Harry's in. Yeah, but no one comes. Someone does come in the movie, don't they? No. Th- then they start like looking out the window and talking. I forgot what they talk about, but it um, was Ron who was coming, wasn't it? No, Ron was there. In the movie? Yeah. No one comes. He just says it because I, I remember thinking like, wait, it, how did like which side is it on? Because um, Sirius exactly. doesn't have to worry about people coming, so they do. But then no one came in, and I was I remember specifically being like, where's the person? I, okay, they- yeah, I remember in the I think it was the last movie they had a fireplace scene where Ron comes in. That's that was, I miss. That was the last movie. Yeah. This one is the one I think where nothing happens. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah. My so bad. there's also a scene in the book where. So this this is a little, a little complicated. Cho mm-hmm. Chang has a friend, and her friend is her mother manages the flu network, the fireplace thing, mm-hmm. and so so Sirius comes once and he gets caught, like he gets like flagged. So when he comes the second time. Somehow in the book, like Umbridge knows because of the uh, informant and like Umbridge's hand comes into the fireplace, swiping around for Sirius Black and he disappears. So it was way more like, whoa, we just got, I thought that's what was going to happen. I'm like, okay, so they skipped, they took the two meetings and they combined them into one and now they're going to make it so that he can't talk to Sirius like that anymore. But she doesn't come in. Nothing happens. Weird. Um <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Harry, bring a teacher. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's my notes. Say that one more um, time. I wrote Harry, bring a teacher. But I don't recall what that means. Um, but how about... So, so there's no Quidditch. So there was the captain that retired last year, but you never saw that because it wasn't in the movie. So the captain retired, but he was the keeper. So they need a new keeper. Ron tries out and gets the job, even though he's not very good. So there's that. Then after Fred, George, and Harry get into a fight, they're banned from Quidditch uh, for the rest of the year or something. So um, so Quidditch goes on. Ron continues to play, and Ginny becomes the new seeker, and a whole lot of stuff. You know, They have replacements for Fred and George, everybody. Um, his firebolt gets stuck, gets chained up in uh, Umbridge's office with Fred and George's broomsticks. 
Um, later on, when they go to meet the Giant, it's during the Quidditch game where Umbridge wouldn't notice that they were gone, which means Ron is not there because he's playing in the game and he actually does some good saves and everyone's happy, but they didn't see it because they weren't there. Just a lot of stuff that's like, you, you, you're, that's what right. you're there for is like the relationships for the kids and like, that's what it's about. That's, what, that's like the best part of Harry Potter. Um, so all that's gone. Um, so Harry has the dream where he uh, bites Mr. Weasley as the snake. I don't yeah. understand. Voldemort is possessing Nagini. No, is Nagini what... is a Horcrux, I think. So who's the snake? Nagini. But he's possessing no, but like the snake, Nagini, and Harry are all the same thing. Well, I think. Yeah, I think I think Emerson's right because if isn't if Nagini Nick, a person that turned into a snake? I they they but said that wasn't that, revealed here. I don't think that was a yeah. A but thing. in the book, they specifically say that it's Voldemort that's the snake, and Harry was in his mind as the snake, which is why Harry felt like he was biting. There's no <laughs> the, mention of Nagini. They came up with the fact that Nagini was a person, I think, for the later movies. I don't think that was ever really established in the books. But and Nagini and Voldemort are separate entities, right? Not really. It, I mean, without really going into extreme detail, it's either Voldemort was the snake, in which case Harry was able to see what was going on because of the link, or it was Nagini, but the fact that Nagini and Voldemort are linked also allowed Harry to see the vision. Or it was just Voldemort manipulating him like he does later. So it's uh, in the book, it's portrayed as it's Voldemort as the snake and Harry gets locked into it and he bites Mr. Weasley and it's a real thing. And then, so there's a whole section where they go to the hospital to meet Mr. Weasley and Harry doesn't want to reveal that it was him that bit him. And that's how he like knew that he was in so much danger. And he didn't just see it happen. He was the snake and mm -hmm. he reveals that and they forgive him and, like but they were cold on him for a little bit and it made him feel even more like alone and all that um but yeah they and then they go to the hospital and they run into um that who's the guy in the in book two? Oh, the Lo teacher lockhart yeah gilder gilderoy lockhart they run into him <coughs> and he's like in the psych ward and, and then while they're talking to him, like the nurse is like, oh, come visit, blah, blah, blah. They come in and they run into Neville visiting his parents who are also like mentally ill now Yeah. in the hospital. So you don't see any of that either. Well, in the movies, they're dead, I'm pretty sure. No, they've lost their mind. In the books, they lost their mind. In the movies, they're dead. Why would, why would they kill them? Just uh, wait well, for the future movies. Well, okay. remember, they, they explained it in this movie. Remember the... They were Aurors and they got they got tortured by Bellatrix. Yeah, they don't say dead. They say tortured. That's what happened in the books too. Well, in the movie, remember, I, at least I'm taking it off of dead because Neville says about to be avenged, meaning I'm assuming they're dead. You don't ever hear any mention of them. Uh, he S does shows avenged him the necessarily picture. mean dead? But Sir, like, isn't Sirius showing him the picture? Like he's explaining, like, uh. Yeah, but like they're gone. They they're essentially gone. They're mentally like completely like well, I know they that. don't even they're know who they are. In Mungo's or whatever the, the mental hospital is. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, in there, there was a break in. In there is a guy who can't speak. And okay. that was that was like the one guy who like had access to the ministry or something. And the and he was the first guy that they tried to go through. And they tried to use the Imperatus curse. And um, because at the end, we realized that only this is not explained in the in the movie, I don't think. Only the person whose prophecy it is can remove it. That is revealing. Wait, this is the guy that uh, the, the Department of Mysteries had like a defense system that went off and like fried his brain, right? Or something. He, they tried to get him to remove the thing and he knew that he couldn't. They put him under the Imperatus curse and he was resisting it because he knew that if he did what they were asking, he would die. They didn't know that though. For, for some reason, they didn't know that he couldn't lift it. So they, they basically like, he got, he got messed up really bad. And then he was still alive. And in the hospital, the nurse who seems to have been in on it 
like delivered some a plant for him and then encouraged him to take care of the plant himself and then the plant killed him and that's like a whole side thing it's a little convoluted i don't think you needed that part but it was like, was it was like devil there. snare or something right yeah there was a lot there that, that was in the book um in the book this is this one this is pretty flimsy during christmas sirius yells get out to creature because he was like where he wasn't supposed to be and i assume i guess sirius has never said this before because creature takes that to mean oh i can leave and then he goes and he goes to the only other wizarding family that he trusts which is the malfoys and like starts telling them all this stuff and i don't even remember what he specifically betrayed them on but in the books, he he doesn't say get out. He says away with you. Or in the movie, he says away with you. And uh, Creature does not betray. This was part of like the conversation with Harry and Dumbledore at the end. When yeah. He starts explaining like Creature actually has not been so trustworthy. And it's like, really? The guy who says he hates you all and wishes you would all die. That guy wasn't trustworthy. And there's no security on what this guy does all day long. Half the time, they don't know where he is. And you somehow like didn't realize that this guy was going to betray the fuck out of you. I think I remember what you're talking about. That's making me think about when you were explaining that there was the reveal that (laughs) Twinkie or Winky Winky. or whatever was like, no, Master, please, Master, no, like screaming. It's the one benefit of these movies is that they cut out all the the house elf shit. It's like like a, a Warner Brothers memo. Like everyone's like, fuck all the house elves. We don't want to hear about them at all. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think it was that he sent he sent creature away and he goes to the Malfoys, but they had him under a, like a, a spell that like it made so that he couldn't reveal any information about the Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, but then he he somehow explained to them that Sirius was important to Harry, which is why Voldemort ends up manipulating right. him with that vision. Right. Yeah, that is how Voldemort realizes that Sirius is important to Harry, which is like, um, it seemed like he had access to his brain. So I'm not sure you needed They know that Sirius and Harry are working together. Like, yeah, but they don't know like that, that they like, that he loves him or whatever. Okay. Um, But he, the book, the movie does it better because he, you assume Dumbledore or sorry, Voldemort just accessed his mind and like saw his memories and knew Mm -hmm. who he would come for. Um, uh, I also got interested, like, what happened to Harry's grandparents? Because Sirius Black says that he, like, used to stay at the Potters and all that. Um, but apparently they're just dead. Yeah. Which is, th- that's, you know, that would be, like, my age. Both my parents were dead. It seems they would have died a little prematurely. All four of them. <laughs> well, um, they're wizards, right? I'm... That, too. That, too. So they all, all four of them died. Wizards very young also how does it how does it work if you're an average wizard and you're living like 200 years like do people not think that that's strange well people around you that you, you i would assume like being a wizard like you like you either live long enough to like have yourself kids, become a matter. villain or die here yeah you like you die young like from some weird <laughs> extraneous threat like they have dragons and other like weird shit like i think what key is talking about is like humans like no. don't humans yeah like, don't, that's, like a, that's a weird thing to like hermione's anyway. gonna outlive her family by like a hundred years yeah what's up like that's another thing like I, I don't think she ever thought about that because it really doesn't make sense and like how could you even have that whatever <laughs> um okay so seamus doesn't believe harry so he thinks that harry's making it up the ministry says it's not voldemort it's Sirius black the Death Eaters have broken out. They're saying Sirius Black did it. And Seamus is like, Harry, I'm sorry. I believe you now. How? It's, it's, yeah. it's implied that it's like, oh, too much crap has happened. Like, they're clearly lying. So, I think he said something like even, uh, like, even the papers are starting to doubt what's going on. So I mean, He says even my mom says that they're not telling the truth. He's the equivalent of the guy that only watches like one news network and believes everything they say. So Harry, Hermione, remember she blackmailed, which wasn't in the movie, Hermione blackmailed Rita Skeeter in, uh, was it the Goblet of Fire? Goblet yeah. of Fire. She blackmailed Rita Skeeter. So she calls her back and says, 
Oh, I just for, I forgot something else about Cho Chang. Um, she blackmails Rita Skeeter and is like, "You're going to write an article, like giving Harry an interview." And Rita Skeeter's like, "Well, the the whatever the profit, whatever the, it's called, the Daily, Daily profit. profit. Yeah, they'll never print it because they're so like one sided bias, which I like. I mean, that's realistic. But Luna's dad is uh, in charge at the Quibbler." which is like mm. a not so reputable magazine. Um, but that's where the interview is re- uh, printed. Yeah. And it's the interview that gains Harry like widespread support that he didn't know he had. People start sending him letters. And of course there are some that are like, you're even crazier than I thought. And <laughs> like, I like that part too. Like this should be in the movie. Um, I mean, I understand why it's not, but it's like, damn, like what, what's the point of putting this on screen if you're going to skip out parts like that? It's really not worth it. Like, there's no point. Um, and then Seamus is like, I'm sorry. That makes sense. <laughs> um, him saying it because of the breakout does not make sense. What was the thing you said you missed about Cho Chang? So they they go out on dates in Hogsmeade. And they're hilarious. Because they always end up with her crying. And Harry, like, keeps saying the wrong thing. Like, he their first date... Uh, Hermione wants to, him to meet her at noon because she wants to set up the article thing. But Harry doesn't know what it's about. So he's just like, yeah, we got to meet Hermione. And, uh, and Cho gets jealous. Like, oh, you want to meet Hermione? And he doesn't realize like why she's jealous. So then she starts talking about, like she, they go to like a couple's cafe and she gets really upset. She's just talking about how she went there with Cedric and he doesn't know what to say. And like another couple is like making out next to them. And it's super awkward. And then uh, she, she, he brings up Hermione again about how they have to go and she gets really upset and then she runs out crying and Harry's just sitting there like, what, what did I just do? And, and then I believe there's a second incident too where like she starts crying again and Harry's like, he's like, don't cry again. And she starts crying and she's like, I wasn't going to cry because you were like, it's funny. And then Ginny is dating a guy that Ron is just like, what the? And then... Um, <laughs> I think that might be in another movie. In the, well, in the movie well, it's funny enough that it should be in the movie. So then at the end, the guy that Ginny, Ginny dumps her boyfriend and, and Cho starts dating him. And Harry's like, I'm over it. I don't care. Like, I got <laughs> doesn't doesn't she calls. date like Dean Thomas or whatever his name is? Ginny does yeah. later. Um, it was like Michael Crawford or something. Um. When the breakout happens, it was like a big deal. Like the fact that Death Eaters had escaped. Uh, this one, I don't know. I just thought it was so weird that they were, I, I, it felt like they didn't really care. I don't know. Yeah. So th- this is something I was going to say. I think this just falls into, it, it's part of the reason the government feels weak as shit. They're like, hey, all these people escaped. Don't worry. We're going to deal with it. And everyone's like, oh, that's bad. And then goes back to normal. Oh, Harry, bring a teacher. It's a typo. Harry being a teacher. This is what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, first of all, this whole Dumbledore's army thing. How could they possibly keep it a secret? Yeah. Like the way that Umbridge is, how could they possibly keep it a secret? It's the dumbest idea ever. They have like 30 kids in there. And um, in the book, there's like multiple people in that place. That here, which I think that the movie does it better. Like, why does there need to be multiple people? Why is why does there need to be people there? The point is that she goes there because it's empty. It's like an empty pub. Anyway, like many people inform them of many different things. Umbridge knew about the thing, or no, somebody told Dumbledore already. He knew it was happening. Uh, I think Umbridge also knew through some other method. She was just trying to wait to catch them in the act. She needed more evidence and shit like that. Um, but they go in there. There's like 30 people. And they signed. I, I, I kind of, well, sorry to interrupt you. I kind of took it in the movie as they knew what was going on. They just had trouble getting into the room of requirement. Because they remember they show like Filch watching it and they show like the inquisitorial squad like running after people. But yeah, I didn't understand. Getting in. What was Filch doing? They were giving him chocolate so that he wouldn't, they were bribing him. Is that what it was? No, no they he, were like, the chocolate was uh, poisoned or whatever. So he fell asleep. They were like messing okay. with him to keep him off their trail and stuff. All right. I think that was just like hijinks added to the movie for like some laughs. But um, what, what happens is they, so they have to sign their name and it's jinxed. They didn't know that it was jinxed when they signed their name, that they will never like, like 
uh, reveal the thing. But it's like, how are you supposed to get more members if you can't talk about it? But I don't know. So for sure, one of those kids would have been like, you should come with me. And their friend wouldn't have gone. And they would have mentioned it to someone else. And pretty soon, like a lot of people are talking about it. And of course, they would get caught immediately. Um, okay, somehow that didn't happen. So then they... So Cho brings her friend whose mom works at the ministry and like, obviously Cho's a moron. <laughs> like that is not the person to bring. So what happens is she, uh, she snitches to Umbridge and her face like breaks out in uh, sneak, I think it says in, in pimples across her face. And every time she, spe- she talks more about it, it gets worse. So like, then she's refusing to speak. Dobby comes in and of course Dobby's not in the movie. He comes into their practice and he is, uh, he warns Harry, like she's coming right now. Umbridge is on her way. So they all escape and Harry gets caught being the last one out, but outside of the room, they take him to Dumbledore's office. The girl is there. She refused to speak. The minister of magic is there. Shacklebolt is there. Uh, there's some other guy, Dwalin or something. And they're all there. And they're saying like, it's like this cat and mouse game, which I understand why they would cut it. It's this cat and mouse game where they're trying to lie Harry's like, I don't know. I was never there. I don't know what you're talking about. And then they're like, here's your witness. And the girl won't speak. And number just like, well, I knew you were doing this and I knew you were doing that. And they're like trying to get out of it the whole time until Dumbledore has no choice, but to say it's Dumbledore's army, not Harry Potter's army. I'm the one that was plotting the whole thing. So I've been working against you and I'm leaving <laughs> basically is what he says. Um, anyway, well, you know what? Now that I think about it, um, because you're talking about that girl whose mother works at the ministry, they they say a line in the movie about like when I think it's when Hermione and uh, Ron and Harry are all in the common room talking about like why Cho was crying when they were kissing. She like Hermione says a line saying like she's probably stressed out because uh, Umbridge is threatening to fire her mom from the ministry. So maybe they like like pushed those two character arcs together. Yeah. No, because because the, the book makes it seem like. They, that that Cho uh, was the one who gave him up, which is like th- their whole relationship got fucked because they kissed and then they cut all the Hogsmeade stuff and then then she's revealed to have betrayed them and he doesn't like her anymore and like that's basically it. Well, then, then he feels bad. Out. Like yeah, they find out it wasn't actually like a betrayal that she was interrogated. She was interrogated, but cracked. No, it was truth serum. They gave her truth serum in the book. Snape gave her fake truth serum. Oh, we, I don't remember that. But okay. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, what was I saying about? Oh, the point is, you could be forgiven in thinking that they're setting Harry up to be the future dark arts teacher because it seems something like he's really good at, and they need one. <laughs> like, not I'm not saying like next year, but like when he graduates, that it seems like his career would be at Hogwarts teaching defense against the dark arts. He seems to be like one of the most talented people ever in that regard. Um, And he ends up becoming an aura, right? Or like the head of the magical law enforcement. I don't know. Is he more suited to that? I don't know. Like he seems like they, they really push that he's, he's great at teaching and he loves it. Even in the movie, they kind of convey that like he's having a great time. And I'm like, so his trajectory is to be a teacher at Hogwarts which he would have never seen coming, but it is like his home and he probably would have loved to stay. And I don't don't know if he would be headmaster or something, but interesting to think about. Um, Anyway, so yeah, the serum. So what happens is Snape, because there is a scene where Umbridge interrogates Harry and forces him to drink the tea, but he won't drink it. That's the serum, but it's, it's, we find out later that it's been faked. So then when she wants more serum for later in the movie, Snape is like, I gave you my entire um, batch. Stock, and yeah. It would take a month for me to make another. She's like, I need it right now. He's like, how could you have used all of it? I only told you to use three drops. And because she's been interrogating students all over, but it was all fake, which is why she couldn't get anywhere. Um, anyway. So, and, and then, so I think the last time Cho had a fight was because Cho asked him to like say something about her friend to get everyone to stop hating her. And Harry said, no. And so she got upset. That was the last fight they had, I believe. Um, Remind me, because right after the whole interrogation scene in the movie, at least they go into 
Umbridge basically almost torturing Harry. Does that happen in the book? I forget. Does she use the Cruciatus curse on him? Not that curse. Oh, maybe maybe she does. I don't remember because I read it over a long period of time. But um, also regarding combat. Okay, let's pretend that like it wasn't a magical school. Let's say that they needed they were they had a class on martial arts, which is a great fucking idea, by the way. And they needed a teacher. So they call me. They're like, hey, we want you to teach the kids like self-defense. So I come in as a coach and like start coaching them in hand-to-hand combat. I would teach them quite a variety of techniques. As far as I can tell, in the magical world, there's like stupefy. Yeah, there's like four Ramis, spells. Yeah. Ramis, whatever that is. Uh, Asio wand, like they just pull the wand away. Accio, um, yeah. Accio, yeah. And then uh, Stellaramis, Patronus. The Patronum is for Dementors. Yeah, that's another one. There's a couple jinxes you could do that will, like, I don't know, stiffen them up or something. What's that one? Petrificus Totalis that paralyzes people? Yeah, there's a couple of those. And then there's like the killing ones. There's like f- six things. Yeah. I'm like, do they even need seven years of class? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, but they, if I remember correctly, as the movies go on too, they become less like spells and more just like, eh, we're just like, fighting with energy well, well, yeah, then, at the beginning yeah. they're all like you have to like get the wand flips perfectly right and Correct. like have like yeah. the right head space but then by the end they're just pointing their wands not even saying anything yeah like Sirius and harry are dueling next to each other and they're not saying anything they're just like blah 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 like deflecting <laughs> and deflecting seems like that would be the bulk of your defense against dark arts yeah they don't say a fucking word about it in the movie or the book and that's like 99 percent of what they do <laughs> is deflecting the spell I mean, in their defense, I do vaguely remember there being a thing about nonverbal spells. Like, powerful wizards can do spells nonverbally. But I, that's very convoluted. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I like that idea, but whatever. There is, there's actually one complaint that I have later on, but it's when we get to the Department of Mysteries. Right. Okay, so there's also... Percy sends a letter to Ron basically telling him... Like, Percy is basically uh, blacklisted from his own family for siding with the minister instead of Dumbledore and the Weasleys and the order. And Percy sends a letter to Ron. He's like, don't. And there's no, there's no uh, uh, outcome to this in the book. Um, But he, he basically sends a letter to Ron, like, don't be Harry's friend. Like, watch out. I didn't, because they're prefects too. That's also out of the the movie completely. Hermione and Ron become prefects. And so Percy's really proud of him. And they is that am I saying it right? Prefect? I think prefect. Are, yeah. Prefect? I don't know. No, prefect. prefect is definitely prefect. right. Um, and he's like, you could you could have a nice career in the in the ministry if you follow my lead and do things as I say and stay the fuck away from that crazy Harry Potter. He's just gonna get everyone in trouble and he's taken down our whole family. And like it, you know, it was pretty scathing. And that was another thing that Harry was just like, I hate my life. <laughs> um, uh, but there was something else I was gonna say about that. Remind me, Percy's the one from like the earlier movies who was like the prefect of Gryffindor. Yeah, he's in this movie. He's in Dumbledore's office when they're trying to arrest him. He's he's not the the Weasley that gets married to Flor Delacour, right? No, I don't know. That's Bill, I think. That's Bill. He, Bill's not even in the movie. Bill doesn't even exist as far as I know. Um, Percy's in the office with Dumbledore, mm. and he's like Fudge's assistant, uh, but he has no lines in the in the book. He has lines. There was something else about that I wanted to say, though. And I, I just remembered and I forgot. Um, another thing that they basically cut out, and I was shocked to see them, was the centaurs. Because you remember in the first one, uh, Ferenz wasn't in there. Oh, I just remembered. Okay. For, do you guys remember Ferenz? You probably don't. Everett, do you remember? Uh, I remember Bane, the guy from the second one. Or the, yeah, I remember Bane. I don't remember Ferenz. Ferenz and Bane are in the first one. Bane hates humans. Ferenz helps Harry Potter. Uh huh. When Umbridge sacks Trelawney, Dumbledore gets Ferenz to uh, take over divination, and it's pretty cool because he talks a lot about how, like, the centaurs read uh, prophecies and the stars and blah blah blah. Wait a minute. I, okay, I think I have it confused. I thought Bane was the one that helped Harry Potter. No, Bane is the one that people. that uh, hates humans. Oh, and, okay, and there's yeah. actually another leader called like Malgorin or something like that who also hates oh. humans. They all hate humans. Okay. Um, the thing is, 
Hagrid has fled and then come back. Ferenc said he was going to help Dumbledore. So now the centaurs hate Ferenc. He's been like ousted. Um, they're, they're basically gearing up for war. Hagrid says one line about it in the movie, which is like, if the ministry keeps encroaching on their territory, they're going to have a rebellion on their hands or something. Um, which I don't think that would go well for the centaurs, <laughs> considering Umbridge could basically take one down herself. So there's like 20 of them. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's um, kind of weird how she did that and the rest of them just stood there. Yeah, that was weird. Um, so basically they don't, they tell Hagrid, like we told you once that we let you go. You come back here, you're, we're going to kill you. And he's like, you don't own this forest <laughs> and shit like that because he brought the giant. And so that was the problem. Um, and also Hagrid asks them to like take care of the giant because he's, he fears he's going to get fired. Another mm-hmm. thing completely missing is Hagrid Umbridge's like she goes through the teachers and like evaluates mm-hmm. them. You see a glimpse of it, but like they're really funny. Like especially like the best part was when Snape was like she's like so you you failed at getting the the job right? He's like obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the other funny part is Hagrid's. They keep telling him like Hagrid like this, this is for real like she's gonna because she evaluated her substitute. And she knows that Hagrid is like Dumbledore's boy. So mm-hmm. they um, they were trying to tell him, like, you got to be serious. Hermione was designing his lessons for him. And he just kept saying, like, no, I'm going to I'm going to show you like something really cool. And they're like, is it illegal? He's like, eh, it's not, you know, and they're like, no, Hagrid, don't do it. And then he like the evaluation happens. And he's like, you probably didn't notice, but that didn't go very well. <laughs> it's funny like it's crazy that this shit's not in the in the movies like it's really can you imagine like they had such good casting and that guy didn't get to do any of those scenes robbie coltrane whatever his name yeah is. like yeah i don't know um in the special he's like you know i may not be here but hagrid will always be here yeah i remember like I yeah that. i think we should reboot it <laughs> we don't uh we don't ever really see anything about his class past uh past the third movie yeah 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 you miss you miss a whole lot uh hermione doesn't want to admit that he's a i mean hermione will, doesn't want to say that he's a good teacher they're like saying he's a great teacher isn't he and she's like oh, okay fine whatever um so anyway the centaur has happened forens is the new divination teacher doesn't exist um oh did i did i put notes about the prophecy and how that works um I think like, I, I think I know how that works, but uh, yeah, the whole thing with Trelawney, right, or however you pronounce her name. Yeah, but yeah, but we'll, we'll get into that because it's another one of Dumbledore's like missteps, in my opinion. Um, so they go to meet Grop, and of course Ron is not actually there in the book, and he's pretty violent. And when they leave, it's like, okay, that didn't go well. Like they cannot take care of Grop. This is a bad idea. Um, so. They go, um, so I liked how they truncated Sirius's memories. Sorry, not Sirius, uh, Snape's memories. They're a lot longer in the book, and I think they're maybe too long. Yeah, I I think the point got across pretty well. Yeah, much better in flashes. I thought that was something the movie did better. Um, But Snape sees into, and remember, his Occlumency uh, tests go on for a long time, Mm -hmm. or, Mm -hmm. or lessons. And Harry doesn't get much better at it, but Snape sees a lot. Snape sees that he was, that Harry was bullied quite frequently by Dudley and like a lot of like traumatic things that I, the book doesn't really follow up on, but I feel like it's going to be something later on where it's like, they didn't have that different of uh, childhoods, except when Lily saves Snape in the book, he calls her a half blood. (laughs) It's like, okay, I think that was a mistake on J.K. Rowling's part because you're supposed to be sympathetic to him. And like, I don't know why you, I don't think you needed that. It's like, it's like, it's like someone saving a white guy and he turns around and uses a slur. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. It's like, I think Les was more in that sense. He didn't have to say anything. Yeah. Um, but I thought that those were important because we didn't really see that much of that from Harry. It was always like child hijinks when he was in those early books. Um, the, his uh, Harry's mother is not even in the memory. Um, so the book 
has a lot of dreams where Harry sees the door in the Department of Mysteries. Mm-hmm. And his, his whole thing is about, about that door. And Snape keeps seeing that. And he even sees uh, the guy that Harry, like, that saw in the hospital and Harry has the, the dream. He sees how Voldemort, he has, like, Voldemort's memory or something where he sees how he hurt the guy. And Snape's like, what was that? Like, where was that memory? And Harry doesn't want to say, which is stupid, because, like, this is exactly why he's in that lesson, is because their uh, memories are crossing and information could go both ways. And here is one thing that's super important and Harry doesn't want to tell him. And Snape lets it go for some reason. Really stupid. Um, But he, like, Snape is specifically like, where was that? Where did you get that memory from? He interrogates him and Harry doesn't want to talk about it. And um, then there's just the other parts, which is, I guess guess maybe we could bring this up later, but... um, Snape stops giving him the lesson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and this is after Dumbledore has, has been ousted. And it's like, okay, but the entire, so the, the reason Dumbledore doesn't, like kind of gives Harry the cold shoulder is because he didn't want Voldemort to think that they had like a close relationship. Right. And I'm like, but you haven't been that close. Like you've been very aloof. And you like show up at weird times and like, you're always like, oh, I'll take care of you, Harry. Like after the trauma has happened to him, kind of like he's grooming him. <laughs> but um, like, they, he's not like checking in on Harry time to time. Like, hey, how's it going? How are your books? Like a principal might do that. They might just call a kid in that they know is troubled and just talk to them once in a while. Dumbledore doesn't really do that. But he didn't want him around. He didn't want to give uh, Harry the lessons himself because he was worried that Voldemort might try to like get into his own mind somehow. And they didn't want to take any of those risks. Um, and I'm like, that's weird. It's weird that you didn't just tell Harry. Yeah. Like, it's really actually stupid that you wouldn't just tell Harry. And you were, you were worried about him finding messages. And you knew that what Voldemort wanted was in the Department of Mysteries. And yet you never told Harry that if you have a dream about Department of Mysteries, it's probably Voldemort tricking you which is like the whole thing. Like yes. that is it. Yes. Forget whatever fucking dreams he had. This is the thing. Department of Mysteries, Harry is going to lift the thing off because Voldemort doesn't want to go there himself. He needs Harry in there to lift the prophecy off the table because it'll kill whoever else that does it. So Harry must never go. But don't tell him that. That's, <laughs> that's Dumbledore's judgment. Why? Because he cared so much that he didn't want to, he just didn't want Harry to know. Seriously. That's stupid. That's pretty stupid. fucking stupid and incompetent. Yeah, but he's proven his incompetence time and time again. And then, yeah. and then they're like, so, so when he sees that memory of Sirius, why doesn't he go to Snape? Because he doesn't trust Snape because Snape threw him out. And Dumbledore is like, I trust Severus Snape. And he's like, but he stopped giving me lessons. He's like, I didn't realize how much he hated your dad. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not. That's what he Wait, said. This is actually. Yes. Oh, what the fuck? He's like, my bad. I, I, you know, I thought he was going to be okay, but I guess he hates your dad a lot. I didn't know. <laughs> like, but dude, like, this is the whole game right here. Harry fucking went all the way to the, um, uh, the ministry, like. Snape is supposed to be on top of that. You didn't want him to be with you because you didn't want to take that risk. Fine. But then Snape is on top. You trust Snape, but he's on, he needs to be on top of that. Like that's a fuck up. That's a major fuck up. And, and Snape let it go. And Snape is seeing these strange visions and memories where he's clearly like seeing uh, a person torturing someone in a room that looks like the ministry and he doesn't pass it on. And then he stops giving the lessons. I mean, I mean, it's so yeah, it's, it's, fucked. it's so fucked. utterly incompetent. Um, anyway, the movie doesn't really emphasize the door and the dream and all that. Um, there's that one scene where Fred and George are comforting a crying child. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's supposed to be the kid was interrogated and like had to write. And oh, just... okay, because then Umbridge shows up and she's like, 
crying children are naughty children or something like that. Yeah, like no, naughty children will be punished. The implication is that that's the child because like I think it zooms in and shows that there's like scarring from doing the pen thing. Uh, and so that they're like, see, ours is already fading. Like it's going to be okay. Like, okay. I, yeah. I was like, what is that? Um, uh, okay. So he gets the fake memory, but before we get the fake memory, they're taking their owls. The mm-hmm. night of the owls, they're taking like, it's over like a period of days. And this is a whole thing that like, is just not in the movie at all. Um, they, it just shows them like writing. Uh, but they're taking their astronomy test at night. And at night, they're taking the test. And Umbridge and her goons go to fire Hagrid in the middle of the night as they're taking their test. So the, the guy, it's funny. Like, the guy is like, okay, like 20 minutes left. And then they're, they're all watching Umbridge go. And, like, the time he's like five minutes left. Hagrid fights five of them. You don't know, you don't know what you're missing. Hagrid, he, like they go in there, they go into his room, and he lets them in, and you, they, they, they continue with their test. Harry's a little distracted, like what's going on there? And then Hagrid runs out. He's like, "You're not taking me like this, bitches!" <laughs> and, he, and they're fighting him. They're throwing stuns, but because he has giant's blood, the spell, the stuns are like bouncing off of him. <laughs> I'm not exact. The book is like he throws one, like, like far. <laughs> he like picks a guy up and throws him. He's knocking him back and forth. McGonagall showed they're all trying to take their test. The guy's like, uh, 10 minutes. McGonagall shows up. She's like, how dare you? How dare you? And then uh, the ministry people shoot her five times. She takes five um, uh, stunners to the chest and is knocked out. And uh, like she has to go to the hospital. Like they take her to the hospital. Hagrid runs into the forest. Um, uh, what's her name? Umbridge is like fucked up and like bleeding. Like, go get him. Like, blah, blah, blah. But Hagrid escapes. That's a big thing. It's a big thing. That's crazy. Like, it's weird. I even forgot about it. But, like, to say, like, for that to not be in the movie and to just be like, I like that movie. I don't know, man. Like, it almost seems like, what's the point? It doesn't seem like there's a point to making a movie if you're going to leave out stuff like that. Um, so, so that then the next day, Harry is taking, like, his history test. Like, history of magic or some shit like that. And he doesn't know what to do. And he falls asleep in the test. And then he has the serious memory and he collapses in the test room and like is screaming. There's also other times like um, uh, when the breakout happens, Voldemort is really happy. And suddenly Harry like is like laughing maniacally. And everyone's like, what are you doing? Are you okay? Like what's going on? And he's like, and then he's like panicked. He's like, he's happy. He's really happy. And then they find out that, that the breakout at Azkaban happened. It was good stuff. I think that that's cool. Um, so then, so they don't want to tell Snape, but they don't really have a conversation about it. They just run to Umbridge's office. So one time, so after the vision, Harry broke into Umbridge's office because Snape gave him a key, or sorry, Sirius gave him a key that can open any door. He breaks into her office, uses the flu network because that's the only one that's unmonitored. And talks to Lupin and Sirius about why his father was such a douche. And they're all like, yeah, he was kind of a douche and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Your mother, like, he, he matured. He still had two more years to go and blah, blah, blah. And, like, we're not proud of ourselves and that was wrong and whatever. So then he's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Umbridge's office to use the flu network to find out if Sirius is at his house. And if he's not at his house, like, we know that the vision is real. So they don't go to Snape which is like, even in this movie, if you had just gone to Snape, you would have been like, all right, shut the fuck up. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll figure it out. Like, he, he doesn't like them, but he's not so stupid that he's just going to be like, no, I don't care what happens to Sirius. Like, this is a real thing. Like, you're saying Voldemort is in the ministry. Um, so what they do is they, they create a diversion. They use Ginny and Luna, blah, blah, blah. They create a big diversion, but this time, Umbridge has set up sensors on her door and she catches hair. She knows when someone has entered. And there was also like another lie with peas that they failed to blah, blah, blah. She like insults them. She calls Ron an oaf for trying to trick her. And they're all caught by Draco. They're all caught by Draco. And um, like the, they have like wands to their throats and shit like that. That's when Snape comes in and she asks for the potion. She's like, I want them to tell me the truth. 
And uh, Snape's like, I gave you all my potion and blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, in the book, Hermione leads them, she, Hermione leads Umbridge into the forest to, uh, she leads them to the centaurs who mm -hmm. do what they do. Um, and then I forget what Grop did, but Grop shows up as well. But it's well, not in the movie, he like picks up Umbridge and and like drops her almost. In the movie, he Grop picks up Umbridge. I thought mm -hmm. the centaurs take her away, don't they? They do, but they Hermione lures her like she's about to use the Cruciatus curse on Harry to interrogate him, and Hermione says, "I'll show you uh, Dumbledore's secret right. weapon out in the forest." She takes him out there, and she's like, "I hate children." And then then the centaurs show up and threaten her, and then she like she like suffocates one of them with the rope and then Grop like picks her up and the centaurs come in and like, okay. Take I don't her think away. Grop was part of it. Um, I don't know about the movie. I don't, I don't remember yeah, the, in the book. I don't think he was part of it, but anyway. Um, so here's another question. Why do they need the Thestrals? I mean, what, what other method of transport would they use? They don't have their brooms. Why don't they have their brooms? Uh, well, I mean, if you're going off book logic, didn't you say that Harry and everyone had their brooms locked up? Yeah, but it were, but in the movie, why did he need the festival? I mean, because they showed him off and they wanted to they wanted to link that back, I guess. But yeah, they did, and I thought the festivals were cool, but they didn't need them. They had their brooms. Um, also, um, you know what kind of this a weird because I'm back. Something kind of odd, and it connects a little bit to the book now that I realize it. Um, so they say that only people who've seen death can see those Thestrals, right? And in the movie, they specifically single out both Harry and uh, both Harry and Luna as the people who've seen death. Everybody else can't see the Thestrals at first, right? But then later on, they can for some reason. Well, because don't they see um, Sirius die? Not yet. How do they get to the Ministry on Thestrals? In the book, they don't see the Thestrals. They just get on them. What we're talking about, Emerson, yeah. is in the book, their their brooms are locked away, so they have to use the Thestrals. But in okay. the movie, that doesn't happen. Right. It's just so, they just decide to take them. Yeah. But that, I was going to connect it a little bit because I remember one of the things in the book was when they eventually get to the ministry and they get into the death room with the, the veil. Harry and Luna and I think a couple others, I think... I forget some of the, I think Ginny is one of them. I think, uh, what's his face? Uh, I think Neville's one of them. They all get entranced by the veil based on like, yeah. And, like and their this view is of the afterlife or something. This is something that the movie does better is that they really truncated the battle because the battle is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're running from room to room, like screaming their heads off, being crazy. Um, you can barely keep it straight. And even before the battle happens, they're going from like the veil room to like the the brain squid room and yeah they had like the, the room of thought the room of love the, the room of time like all these places there was too much yeah so they actually did a better job there but okay here here's here's another part so harry picks up the prophecy so the plan worked i like this by the way such a shame we don't get jason isaacs as uh norman osborne like i, I like william defoe i mean i love william defoe but um that would have been really great casting. Uh, anyway, so why do they reveal their faces to the kids? I don't know. I took it as masses. In one sense, yeah. Why not just kill the kids? I mean, I, I don't think the others. I don't know, but I feel like Voldemort wants to kill Harry himself. In the book, they make a big thing about Harry's holding the prophecy, so they cannot hurt him otherwise it'll break okay so they can't hurt him but even in goblet of fire they all saw uh Vol voldemort just kill cedric no big deal kill the spare yeah like no big deal at all they show their faces to these kids these kids mm -hmm. can't walk away right i mean i think harry already knew that uh, Malfoy was a Death Eater. He saw it during the... Uh, sure, but then you're going to have six other kids saying, like, we were there, and and if they walk away, they're going to go straight to whoever's in the ministry to help them. Like, these kids can't see the faces and walk away. I mean, they should all be killed. Everybody knows who Bellatrix was strange is. That really doesn't matter. The others, I don't even recognize who they were. Sure. Uh, yeah, in the book, they're, like, known. Um, yeah, but... 
but I'm just saying, like, it doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't just kill those kids. Um, as far as the kids, like, battling back, I thought that that was okay. It makes sense for them to catch the Death Eaters off guard. It doesn't make sense for them to have a prolonged battle with them. Um, uh, this is – I had a problem, but here, when you're done. Why don't the Death Eaters kill them? Like, why don't they use Avada Kedavra? I have no idea. Why, why, why even fuck around with, like, Stupefy or anything else? Like, you don't care if you kill them, right? I mean, yeah, if you're really evil, then – That's the whole – Makes sense. And, and is it not justified for them to also use Avada Kedavra, the kids? I don't know. Because even if you get in trouble, like – you got attacked by death eaters. like you're gonna have the death eaters body there like, i mean you'd think it'd be i remember like those unforgivable curses i think are tracked so they like people know when you're doing it and i also remember like after good, this after they this need help in this movie i think they make it legal to use those curses for a period of time to like fight back against the death eaters um because i i felt like i don't understand why they're trying to stun people when, especially in the book, like the guys keep coming back because <laughs> they, they like stun them and then they like they recover. Um, there was a whole well, thing. Uh huh. Well, I was going to say, um, I don't think a majority of those students can actually use those unforgivable curses either. Because one of the things I remember from um, Goblet of Fire in, from the book was Moody was teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts. And he said, you have to really be in the mindset to kill someone or to torture someone. Well, you could all point says that. Because he uses the Cretaceous, is it Cre- Cruciatus Cruciatus. Curse. Cruciatus. He uses it on Bellatrix, and it doesn't work. Is. It works. It just it's just not that tough. She's like because well, really I remember like, the thing it. Moody said was you could all point your wands at me right now and scream Avada Kedavra, and the most I'd probably get is a nosebleed or something along those lines. Okay, so well, I'm pretty sure most of them couldn't do it. Well, I mean, the Ro- Death Eaters definitely could have done it, and they should have. <laughs> <laughs> But I, um, I have a problem with that final fight. Um, the movie else? version. I don't, I don't remember about the book version, but the movie version. Um, something I remember from the book is that black, uh, like, you know, like uh, smoky flight that the Death Eaters do. That's a spell that was specifically invented by Voldemort, unaided flight. And it, it was supposed to be impossible. Like wizard, it's an unnatural right. ability to fly without a broom or a, a, like a magical creature. And yet right. Voldemort somehow did it. Um, it is very specifically a dark magic power, yet somehow the Order of the Phoenix use it and they're like, they have like a light version of it, like the white, the light smokiness. Yeah, everybody's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you never see it again in any of those. It's, it's not mentioned in the book, anyone flying. Um, in fact, in the book, they burst in through the door, like the Order okay. just burst in finally mm-hmm. because Snape warns them. Um, okay. When the prophecy breaks, when a prophecy breaks, that's when you hear it. In the movie, he holds it up and he can hear it. Yeah. But when the prophecy breaks is when you hear it, and they couldn't hear it because once later on it breaks, they the fighting's happening and Harry doesn't hear it. Like, does and, it break it? He like kicks it by accident or something. Uh, no, he's pulling Neville because Neville's hurt. That was the other thing. The kids get fucked up. Like, no one dies. But they're they're pretty banged up. Like Ginny breaks her ankle, uh, Neville breaks his nose, and they like jinx his legs, and he can't walk or something like that. Um, Ron gets hit with like some like mental thing where he like can't think, and he's like basically an idiot. Um, uh, Luna gets like thrown right into a wall. Like they they get roughed up pretty bad. It's just weird that the Death Eaters don't go for the kill on all the kids that aren't holding the prophecy. But that was the whole thing. Is like don't let it break because Voldemort wants to hear the prophecy. But apparently all you needed was to like just hold it. Um, the other thing I don't understand is why did Voldemort show up at the end? Like if he could show up, why couldn't he just go do the thing himself? That's true. I don't I mean, know. Like, uh, I don't know. I think I, it's I think just... At that point, I feel like shit had already hit the fan. Those people would have warned the ministry and they would have all shown up. I think his whole purpose for not going to the ministry in the first place was uh, like Fudge in the ministry had very conveniently convinced everyone that he didn't exist and like wasn't alive. So he wouldn't so just he, go walking yeah. in there. Right. But the Death Eaters got off. in. Yeah, but like. They were in they're, there. They're, they're like his followers, though. They're not him. Right. But they cleared the way. The place was empty. Like when they went in the ministry, at least in the book and in the movie, I think so too. Like it was empty, wasn't it? Yeah. 
So he could have walked right in. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess that's a plot hole. It's just weird. Like, why wouldn't Voldemort just... Like, they cleared the way. Harry got in. All those kids got in. They didn't even have a tr- any trouble, right? I know. It's the whole party. You can just show yeah, up. Yeah, nobody, ha- nobody stopped them at all. Even in the book, Harry's like, there was supposed to be a security guy here because he remembers when he went to the hearing. And there was, and he's like, the guy's not here. Something, they definitely d- did something. Mm. So Voldemort could simply, like, clear the way for the ministry or clear the ministry out for himself. Anyway, um, Sirius is deaf at the hands of Bellatrix Lestrange. I think done much better in the book or in the movie. In the book, he's literally like, you're going to have to do better than that. And then he pops up and gets shot. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. I, I, I remember his death in the book. I like the movie version a little bit better. The movie version is better. Um, it is better. He, I think if I remember correctly, he's, it, it's a lot more stupid in the book as if I remember it's uh, he, he's fighting Bellatrix and she hits him with like a stun spell. It wasn't, it wasn't a killing curse. It was like some random curse spell and he trips back through the veil and that's how he dies. In this one, she hits him with the killing curse and he falls back through the veil and dies that way. I don't remember that he tripped. I remember him floating, like the word float. He I got hit with he... some like unidentified curse. But it killed him. The and only then thing his I... spirit like got pulled into the veil. He, it didn't kill him. He, the whole thing with that veil is like it's the it's like the doorway between life and death. You want if me you to walk you, through it? You interested? In, I could pull it up right now. Sure. Like if you walk through it, you Have die. It but um, she like she like hits keep him. Keep talking. With I'm gonna try to find it. Yeah, I didn't. I I thought like he was just he was dead, and then his soul got taken well, because yeah, he the was mo- dying. In the movie, like she hits him with the killing curse, and he his soul floats through the veil, but. Because there's, there's like a line even, I think, because uh, I, I read about this recently. It's um, Harry is convinced, like, he doesn't even think he died. He, like, falls back through the veil and he's convinced that he'll, like, see him yeah. on the other side. Um, keep going. I'm trying to find it. He's, like, talking to Malfoy. Ron. Yeah, it's... um. I, I will say, though, as a side note... um. Casting for Bellatrix, Helena Bonham, Helena Bonham Carter, I think is perfect casting. She's... She was great. And I actually think that she was really annoying in the other ones, but I, I don't remember them. I thought she was perfect in this one. Yeah, I really like her. I thought she had some of the best moments. Like she kind of stole the show. Um, there's a moment with her, I think, in the last movie that I really like with her that I, I'm not going to talk about now because it's a spoiler, but uh, she, I think, this these movies are filled okay, with okay. such great castings. Only one. Okay, so Dumbledore shows up when the Order is fighting the Death Eaters, not okay. later. But I'm okay with the way the movie did it. Actually, makes more sense. But when Dumbledore shows up, well, okay, let's talk about that later. But only one couple were still battling, apparently unaware of the new arrival. Harry saw Sirius duck Bellatrix's jet of red light. He was laughing at her. Come on, you can do better than that. He yelled, his voice echoing around the cavernous room. The second jet of light hit him squarely on the chest. <laughs> <laughs> he got fucked. <laughs> he got his cheeks clapped. The laughter had not quite died from his face, but his eyes widened in shock. Harry released Neville, though he was unaware of doing so. Harry jumped to the ground, pulling out his wand as Dumbledore turned the, to the dais too. It seemed to take Sirius an age to fall. His body curved in a graceful arc as he sank backward through the ragged veil hanging from the arch. He didn't trip. He got he got trip he he got hit and tripped through it. Emerson, did you hear a trip in that? I yeah, mean, like, how else would you describe it? Like, if I were to hit you and you were to fall back, like you, you'd be forced back. That's what happened. But it says his his body curved in a graceful arc. That's not him doing that. That's that's like he him got, getting he got, pulled. Like he got hit with the spell and got like he fell through the veil. He got pulled into the veil because he's dead. I thought he. I think the veil pulls in dead people, doesn't it? it doesn't it's like where it's, the souls are collected. I always thought it was like if you walk, it's a doorway. If you walk through, it's a one-way trip. Yeah, but I think. I mean, that, was, that's why they're studying it. It's the death room. That's like where they study the concept of death. I mean, you're right. It is a. It is a like an unnamed spell. The red light. So it's like. 
they, they actually like say that. what the red light is a couple of times, but I, was, I wasn't paying attention because I didn't know that it was going to matter. Um, I mean, the red light in the movies is it's the stun, it's expelliarmus or whatever it is. But so maybe disarm. that, maybe he got hit with that. But I guess, I mean, I guess it is a weird way to die. Maybe he did just fall through. If you read on, I'll bet you anything like it's Harry didn't even expect him to be dead. Well, yeah, I guess Harry doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And he's an idiot. Like, he actually goes on for way too long. He's like, no, he's coming back. Yeah. Um, okay, anyway. Um, okay, so Dumbledore shows up. Dumbledore shows up and basically starts beating the fuck out of everybody. Like, single-handedly. Okay. Which I don't know how I like about that because it seemed a little much, to be honest. Um, so, so he starts beating the fuck out of everybody. Nobody, everyone starts running. They're like scrambling. And he's just be, like, he almost like by himself beats all the Death Eaters. Uh, Kingsley, after Bellatrix kills Sirius, Kingsley just gets hit with a stupefied or something. And he's like, like, dude, you're such a letdown. And, and, um, uh, so Dumbledore like takes care of them. But Harry chases Bellatrix. And he hits her with the Cruciat- Cruciatus, what was it? The Cruciatus curse. Cruciatus curse. And as he's doing that, uh, Voldemort appears. Mm-hmm. And it's actually kind of weird because in the book, she li- like she, they don't even mention her at that point for a while. And I even had to go back and read. I'm like, did she escape somehow? And I, didn't, I missed it. But she was still there. And Voldemort's like taunting Harry or whatever. And then, and like, she's trying to tell Voldemort like Dumbledore is here and he's like, shut up, bitch. I'm trying to talk to Harry Potter. And then, and then Dumbledore <laughs> shows up and he's like, Oh my God. And the chapter's called the only one he ever feared. And um, so they start fighting. Now the fight between Dumbledore in the book and Voldemort, Dumbledore seems a lot more like, okay, this is why he's feared because he can go toe to toe with Voldemort. But the fa- like going toe to toe with Voldemort is a certain strength, but being able to like just dis- destroy like 10 Death Eaters by yourself to me is like that's too much. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that in a one on one, that Dumbledore is the only one that could stand with Voldemort is cool. In the movie, uh, Dumbledore shows up, obviously, he doesn't fight the Death Eaters, and I actually thought his performance was a little weak compared to what I saw in the book. Um, that that those golden statues of the centaurs and whatever those come to life and like protect Harry and shield him. There's none of that, and so like what Dumbledore does is he uses a lot of clever magic around him. That um, uh, he uses a lot of clever magic around him to like defeat Voldemort in cool ways, and they're like trading back and forth and really sparring, and it's all like like no one really gets hurt because their magic is so like uh, it creates like shelters in a way like there's like barriers to to each other so they can't they're unable to it's like they fight to a draw basically Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the movie dumbledore kind of loses a little bit yeah um at one point in the book voldemort does his vanishing thing and harry's like is he gone did we win and dumbledore is like dumbledore is like panicked (laughs) he's like no no he's still here and and they're like looking around like ready it's tense it's cool um just like Goblet of Fire had a much more tense and cool uh, finale in the movie. I don't know. It's just been hard to. I hard actually kind of, I kind of liked the battle at the end, at least the way it looked. Yeah. Visually but, it was interesting. But the one, the one thing that kind of depresses me is like, you see that level of magic fighting. I don't think you ever see something like that ever again in any of these movies, like that level of like battle. Don't you see it in Fantastic Beasts maybe? Do they have? I mean, sort they, of like they at have the like end. a duel. Uh, they had they had like uh, the whole like big CGI like demon thing at the end, but two wizards but against one, one. Like the second one didn't have like a a real fight. They had like the the dragon weird like raid boss looking thing like with the blue oh, flames. The, but I thought that was the first one. Okay. But I mean, like two wizards like one on one. Yeah, that, like yeah. That. I'm into that too. Yeah. You never really see that. Um. Okay. So. When Voldemort is, he like vanishes and then reappears and is like taunting Harry as Harry is like laying in the sand. Mm-hmm. 
did Dumbledore just sit there? I and guess. Because Voldemort vanishes. Then he reappears. Talks to Harry. Dumbledore does nothing. And then he gets caught because he reappears. I took it. That. I he took like it as he's time like, or something, right? Yeah, I took it as he, it's like not happening in real time. But then like he gets this, spotted there. Well, no, it's at the end after Harry like forces him out. Right. But it seems really foolish of Voldemort to like do that. Because he, he literally gets caught because of that. Like they see him, his yeah. whole body, like they see him. Like, dude, that was your biggest thing. Like you, they could have easily spun this as Dumbledore is attacking the ministry. And like the fact that he did that was weird. Anyway, um, don't you think that Fudge should have resigned after this? He did. Did he they resign? Said, he didn't resign he, in this movie. He did it in the movie, like when they do the montage of like the paper, it says Fudge resigns. I'm pretty sure. Am I wrong? He didn't I resign think Everett's book. right. He he resigned. Like there's a there's a clipping in the newspaper that says Fudge resigns or whatever because he was wrong. I'm pretty sure Everett's right. Okay. Well, we know today that he would have definitely not resigned. <laughs> he would have doubled down. Yeah. Um. So then, so the thing about the promise, so they go back, um, Dumbledore talks to the ministry and then he goes back to the office where he sent Harry and he's having a discussion with Harry. He tells him he loves him and like how it's all his fault because he didn't want to like bring him in and tell him what was going on because he loved him so much and blah, 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 weird shit. Then he uses, I think the pensive uh, to, to show the day that he heard the prophecy from Trelawney. Mm -hmm. He says he went to he went to go interview Trelawney and he didn't even want to do divination. He thought it was stupid and he wasn't too impressed with her. And he told her that. <laughs> and then as he was leaving, she like gave like the real prophecy of the Voldemort thing. So he's heard it. And that is why he, he hired her. Now, my question is, why did you have to hire her? I think it was to protect her. her. Yeah, I think it was to protect her. Okay, but did she have to teach the kids bullshit? Because that's basically what she did for the 30 years that she worked there. Was just waste their time. <laughs> because she I made mean, one prophecy one time. What do you mean, kid? That's super realistic. It seems I mean, like he, like, okay, he takes on Hagrid. I don't, you know, he waited a while before he made Hagrid a professor. Did Trelawney really have to be a professor? No, it's just nonsense. It's just Well, I mean... Story. Other than, other than that, like she just would just be living on the grounds, like as like a housekeeper or something. Because imagine for a moment, like they he doesn't protect her; she's just out in the wizarding world. She doesn't get hired. Like they said it in the movie, and I'm pretty sure they say it in the books that Voldemort likes to invade the minds of other people. So you could he she could have very easily gotten her and just gotten the prophecy from her, and then this whole thing would have never happened. I agree. He also could have done that. Um, I just think that. It's weird that he made her a teacher. And yeah, like when it, Umbridge is like the standard of, of education here is low. I'm like, yeah, because Hagrid sucks. And so does Trelawney. And, and they have never had a defense against the dark arts teacher. Yeah, like there's and there's some they all keep dying and disappearing. Yeah, well, Voldemort put a curse on the job, I think, because he applied for it, didn't he? Something like that, I think. I think he did. It's not in the movie so far, but um, okay, the last thing is. Doesn't it seem like they're sort of setting up Luna as a love interest at the end? A little bit, yeah. I was, I, I actually was gonna bring that up. I was like, hmm, interesting. So it seems like if, to me, if I was gonna make predictions, I'd be like, Luna is the new love interest. Harry's gonna be the teacher by the end of his like, by like the end of his story. Like he's gonna become a teacher at the end. He's gonna he like it, he had to hit. He had to have really high marks on his owls. In the book it says to become an or and it didn't seem like he did that especially since he fell asleep during one of the exams <laughs> and so it seemed like he would be really well suited to be a defense against the dark arts teacher i don't know i don't know where this story goes like we're gonna see i guess um i'm pretty sure it doesn't like the story ends with like school ending not like yeah and then you see him when he's old uh I don't know, but there's some interesting things that they set up here, and I don't think that they follow through. I agree. Um, 
All right. Uh, I think we can put that conversation to rest. Do you have a fight of the week, Emerson? I do, actually. So in this movie, Voldemort tricks Harry into coming to the ministry by giving him visions. Kia, if you had to trick me and Everett to come to the ministry, we're just wizards. You're just, how do you give us visions to get us to go to the ministry? How do I trick you into going in? Yeah. Everett, do you think you'd fall for the hummus trick again? <laughs> Ever, Everett's visions keep seeing food night and then the hummus like flashing in the back. Just all my lit- literary mistakes. Yeah. Just, um, hmm. I mean, the obvious play is it has to be someone you love, but it has to be someone who would also like go there. So, like, I'm Voldemort, right? In this scenario, you're like, does it have to be you. the ministry? No, let's just say you have to trick us to go. Well, you have to, the thing is like, it's, it's the point is to get us to go to open up the, like the prophecy. It's wherever the prophecy is held. Yeah. yeah. And, and when I'm telling you, so if I give you this memory, are you aware that I might be trying to trick you? I mean, we're as aware as Harry might be. So not really like. Well, okay. I, I'm under the impression that he was aware that he could have gotten tricked. I think he was just unaware of how it might happen. Well, the thing is, like, you'd have to believe someone was in mortal danger. But if the idea was that I was just trying to get you to go to a place and do a thing, like, I would honestly just tell Emerson, like, I would show you a vision of, like, nothing but cakes on a shelf <laughs> and, like, a vision of you guys eating it. And I would just keep putting that into your head until you're like, I'm going to go check this place out. <laughs> And once you get there and like probably bring ever because he wants some cake too. Like, I don't think, I think that would be it. I think, I think, yeah, unless I'm going to like capture or like make you think that your family is dying. That's about the only other way, which is, you know, what Voldemort did. That's fair. Um, okay. How about roundup? I watched, what the fuck did I watch? I've been playing the guardians. Oh, I guess that's in game. Uh, I, I finished Rick and Morty. No, but I finished Rick and Morty. Have you guys seen the fifth season? No. Yeah. Ending was uh, interesting. Very like sci-fi. I mean, yeah. Uh, I think they're trying to step away from like all the weird like antics that they normally get into and they're trying to make it more streamlined. I thought that the last two episodes were a lot better. Kind of more what I come to expect from the quality of the show. Um. Anyway, uh, no, I haven't watched Cobra Kai. Did you ever? Yeah, I, I watched it like the first three days it came out. I thought it was great. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I just want to like give my attention well, to it. I think I said it to you guys the last time I got asked this was, I think it's great. However, I definitely think it's nearing its peak if it's not there now. Right. They're going to make another season, but I don't think that next season is going to be as good as what they've already shown off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody see The Witcher yet? Yep. No. You have, did you see it last week already, Everett? I forgot. Yeah, I, I've seen it for yeah. a while. Okay, you said you liked it, right? I said uh, I said I liked it from the perspective of someone who's never read the books because I know people have a lot of complaints for it. Yeah. All right, any roundup from you guys? Uh, I The only thing I've watched is I watched the entirety of that 20th anniversary Harry, Harry Potter. Potter thing? Yeah. yeah. It was cool. It was interesting. Like, I don't know. It was kind of made them like me. I kind of made them it made me like them a little less. Yeah, because like like hearing like I don't know. It was it was odd because they're like going through their lives. Um, Bellatrix, I forgot what her name, Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah, like she was like totally hitting on Harry, or whatever his name is, Daniel. Daniel Radcliffe. And that yeah, was weird. Like, and then the Tom Felton and Emma Watson like love story. Yeah. Like, and then she's like, about? but there was nothing romantic about it. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck are you yeah. saying? Then? What are we talking about? It's stupid. Um, they like showed a weird, like Hagrid always made us laugh. And then it's like him like saying racist jokes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wasn't he saying like some weird shit? Something, but then I didn't realize how many people were dead from those movies. Well, wow. like a, I mean, you, did you watch the whole thing? No, because I, I haven't seen the last and part two. later. They show like everyone who's dead. And I was like, holy fuck, there's a shit ton of them that are dead. Well, like yeah, a lot of minor like a, characters. Like I was like, holy like shit. Like Alavander's dead. Uh one of the one of the fuck. Uh one of the Dumbledores is dead. Snape's dead. 
Is, is think, McGonagall dead or is she still alive? No, I think she's still McGonagall. alive, but she didn't show I, up because it was, I think she's really old now. Oh. Um, but I think that, like, this is a stupid idea when you make characters live for hundreds of years. Like, it's hard to put that on film. Well, people what makes die. You think they live for hundreds of years. <laughs> Isn't Dumbledore like, he's a, he's, he's a he's, middle aged man in 1920. He's not like hundreds of years old. I think he's like, at the very most, like in his 80s or 90s. But he's still pretty spry. But he's, he's the a only person that I know of, uh... in the 1920s. Like his hair is gone. He's a little older. Like he's got some fat around his waist. Like he's an older guy, Jude Law, in that movie. That was mm-hmm. the 1920s. So you're talking 70 years. He wasn't 20 years old in Fantastic Beasts. So you're saying he's over 100. But wasn't he also there? Like, wasn't he a teacher when? The Chamber of Secrets was open the first time. I mean, yeah, and they showed him as like uh, they showed him as like a a bearded individual. He was already old. Yeah, he was already like. uh, I mean, like the only person that I know from Harry Potter that lived like hundreds of years was Nicholas Flamel, and that's like because he had his serum. I thought all the wizards lived like longer than. I think it's I think it's at least over a hundred. Like everybody, that's how they make it seem. I I mean, I don't know it for sure. Just just, look. They make it seem that way um what what we talking about oh yeah anyway um so for gaming i've been playing the guardians game Mm -hmm. i like it i give it a win i think the storytelling is pretty good except for the one part about peter's mom i'm about halfway through i think okay levels um i do think it's a lot like fallen order just better um the level design and like you know traversal and look for like collect bullshit all the time so you can do stupid upgrades that make no sense to what you're collecting (laughs) Um, I, I, there's a lot of sound issues, like graphical sound issues. Um, like it cuts out random times, like on the cutscenes, uh, clipping a lot of the cutscenes. my game, my save file got corrupted and I didn't what touch it for like two weeks. Well, I, I think you're, you're playing on a last gen console, right? I might have something to do with it. I mean, is it last gen? Like, no, it's, it's made for new gen. Yeah, I know, but like my my console is not old. It's the Xbox One X. Uh, it's like it's not, it's not like it's, you know, it's not like an outdated piece of hardware. It's just like there's a newer one that's only been out a little bit, a little while. I, I, I guess I, th- I thought you were running on like a like an older version. By the way, um, the average wizard life expectancy is 137 and three quarters years. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um so I, I, there's some of that stuff um and just like other things like you have to press y to interact but you have to be within a certain range and looking at it a certain way and like sometimes it doesn't work and it's really frustrating because i can't like it's, one of the missions what you have to basically what you're talking about there's a lot of games that do this where like you almost have to be like slotted into a position for something yeah. to happen. And it like fucks with you because you can't, it, I don't know. I've always found that type of style annoying. And like, it's cool that all the costumes are like stuff that you can collect in the game, but they put them like, they really tuck them away. And I'm like, I'm looking under every nook and cranny and like one mission, I noticed that there was something that I could make Drax lift. So then I had him lift it. And then I was looking around for where I, he could place it, but I went too far and it pushed me into a cutscene. So now I don't, I don't get to do it. And if I want to go get whatever that was, who even knows what it was, I have to then restart the whole chapter. And the chapters are kind of long. And there's a lot of like wave enemies that just kind of drag it out a little bit. And I mean, it's a good game. I'm enjoying it. But yeah. yeah. Um, I, I like this version of Star Lord a lot better. Okay. Uh, okay. I, didn't, I don't, I'm not aware of any trailers. Yeah, neither am I. I didn't see any trailers. There was a still for the Batman with Paul Dano's Riddler. That's oh, uh, I saw that. Yeah. Peacemaker show is coming out this week. <laughs> I yeah. can't believe they made that in like three seconds, dude. You can let yeah. us know how that is. Uh, I'm not going to watch it, so. Uh, Doctor Strange director Scott Derrickson would absolutely return to MCU despite sequel creative differences. Um, let's see. We can find his quote. Um it was reported that the sequel would be the MCU's first horror, but with the multiverse clearly a new priority for Kevin Feige, plans seemingly changed. With that, Derrickson parted ways over creative differences. So, so he wanted it to be horror, and yeah. they wanted it to be multiverse. 
And it looks like his quotes at the bottom in the yellow there. I loved working with Marvel and would absolutely do it again. No. Mm. Oh, so that's all he says. All right. Um, <coughs> let's, let's go through all the Marvel stuff. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is coming to digital. We think it's going to be digital starting February 28th. Um, okay. Nice. And then the, the buying stuff is probably shortly after. Um, by buying stuff, you mean like all the figure releases and the stuff? The physical right? copy, I mean. Oh. I don't think they going to announce the figure stuff. Here. I don't know. I think that I think that there's still a country that's waiting for a premiere. Hmm. All right. Um, have you guys heard She-Hulk rumored to feature a major status quo shift for Bruce Banner and the Hulk? No. What's no. it supposed to be? The rumor is that he's going to leave Earth at the end of She-Hulk. This person, My Time to Shine, this is like on the Reddit leak subreddit wait isn't she like insane stuff too she says all sorts of shit yeah this is all rumors um she says that andrew's definitely coming back toby's definitely coming back earth will leave and then um that the sun scar is going to exist uh a father son round trip to get help scar finds his way to earth and she hulk and they're not sure, like, what does that mean with time? Sakaar has a different time. That means that baby Hulk from Ragnarok had a had sex. Uh, yeah, it's odd. I don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, let's see, any more um, Marvel stuff? Spider-Man No Way Home video manages to identify those mysterious multiverse silhouettes. Um, okay, TikTok. We pretty much know... Yeah, I don't really want to because I have no choice. Um, we pretty much know it's Rhino, Craven, and we think the other one was Black Cat. That was Scorpion. There's Craven. Did they show one at the beginning there? I didn't know. They, they showed, I think it was like Superior Spider Man or something. Oh, it was a different Spider. Okay. Is that supposed to be Mysterio? I guess they're saying. I'm not so craven. Okay, that okay. Is that a villain? That's I think that's Superior Spider-Man or something else. Scorpion. Okay, Black Cat. Rhino. I guess that's Mysterio. Are but is Superior Spider-Man a villain? I mean it's it's Doc Ock's brain inside Peter Parker's Oh body. right, that one. Yeah, fuck that. Um I know some people like that comic. I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the comic. I don't want to see that. I think I sent this to you guys, the symbiote concept art. Yeah. Yeah. I like um, it. Yeah, it's good. I think this is what I like. I want to see it like be alive. And people are like, I don't know about the veins, but I like that it looks alive. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that would be cool. It'd be a badass figure to own. I just want the figure. I don't even care about the movie. Um, Uncharted star Tom Holland recalls quest to find the right director. Does the movie not have a director? No, it does now. I think they I think went to find the right in. director oh. for the oh, movie. Oh, quest. I, for some reason, I was thinking request. Okay. Some of the directors came in and had ideas that we didn't like that just didn't fit the characters and we had to move on to other people. We took inspiration from everyone. There were very different variations of Drake and very different, different variations of Sully. Uh, some people preferred to make the game. Some people wanted to make it completely different to the game. Okay, well, it looks a lot like the game. So, um, Eternals VFX supervisor reveals early, vastly different plans for Arishim. Um, there was a version where Arishim shrunk himself down and essentially was like Willy Wonka walking through the World Forge. That got lost, the Wall of Memories and all of that stuck. Even though it was something that was conceived much later, the entirety of the World Forge was photographed during a separate pickup shoot long after principal. Chloe was very adamant about, we want to instill the spirit of Jack Kirby into this. Look at the comics and look at the way he draws things, which is this visual language of hard graphic shapes mixed with alien forms. You know, it's not messy, but it's not sleek either. There's a lot of texture and grit to the way he designs. Okay, whatever. Um, uh, I think Eternals comes out on Disney Plus this week. That will yeah. be nice. I want to rewatch that. Blade Reboot reportedly looking for an actress to play Faiza Hussein, a.k.a. Excalibur. I don't know who that is. Uh, a tough and agile fighter with strong presence and a talker who never backs down. 
Potential candidates must be open to training period beforehand. Actors with fight experience are encouraged to submit. It's a shame if I, if it was for a male, I would maybe give it a shot. Seems like it's a Middle Eastern or, or North African actress who speaks French. Never mind. Uh, Huntley and Abid, South Asian. Interesting. It's going to be diverse, I guess. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Have you seen this, Ev? Um, I there saw was a leak of a picture with his helmet. And it looks fake, but they're thinking it might be real. I have not seen this. The I saw they, this. The reason they think it might be real is because Kamala Khan. is That's not uh, art that we've uh. seen. <laughs> so, I think it's comic accurate, but I God don't damn, care. That looks ugly. It's ugly, yeah. I saw on the post that I saw, everyone was like, "Damn, you look sick." We're finally getting a real. Wait, 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 yeah, Kia, you sent me. You said I think you sent me this. It had the. Uh, it had Jane Foster as female Thor next to that. I liked that. Yeah, like, that's, full body. We have that I, article too. I liked that. She looked cool. Him though, he um, looks like Nova, and I don't like that. No, it's just though. It's just it's 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 a weird helmet. It doesn't look cool. Like his his Ragnarok helmet looked cool. Um, I'm, anyway. I'm gonna have to buy the Infinity War Thor before that comes out. <laughs> Hawkeye star Vincent D'Onofrio addresses fan criticisms about his enhanced strength. You know, I learned recently a couple of fans. They were very excited about it. They were commenting about the strength that I have because I'm throwing Kate Bishop around and stuff. But I totally forgot. I just saw a clip on Twitter of me and Charlie Cox fighting in the first season. Obviously, he's an incredible actor or director. He helped develop the character of Wilson Fisk. There's a scene that we shot on an alley in a street in Brooklyn where I'm literally throwing Daredevil through the air. Like I'm picking him up and swinging him 50 feet into a garbage can. I do it a few times in that fight. It's no different. It's really not. So I keep saying that it's the same fist that was in Daredevil. It's the same cannon, but people get confused about things. I understand. <laughs> that same fist that went through all the trouble to defeat Daredevil just gets popped right in the head at the end. Like it's nothing. But did you guys think that his strength level was the same? No, no, it's not the same at all. I think he's like, he's just saying nonsense. He was just strong in Daredevil. He's like yeah. super powered in this one. I don't even think he realizes it because he doesn't really do it. You know, it's like fake. Yeah. Like the stuff he was doing doesn't make sense. Uh, spider Man No Way Home concept art reveals that America Chavez was originally going to appear. And this was probably how they were going to pull like the other Peters in. Because mm. she, she has the ability to open other worlds. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's going to be in Doctor Strange instead. Yeah. Um, the weird thing about the weird thing about this is you, the art books for the movies are not on sale the way that they used to be. They come out way later now. Like this book is not even up for sale anywhere. It's not listed. I'm not sure what's going on. The delay is huge between release and books now. <laughs> That's crazy. X Men '97 voice actor Cal Dodd confirms Wolverine return for the upcoming Marvel Studios animated series. Do you guys care about this? It's cool. Yeah, that could be interesting. I watched this show. It didn't speak to me the way that '90 Spider Man did, but um, you know, it is a good show for X Men fans. Mm. Uh, More concept art features Green Goblin battle and hints at early story plans. Um, Let's see. It looks like the integrated suit and goblin. Okay. Looks pretty. Uh, Early battle, we were exploring the flow of the fight. Okay, whatever. Um, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania star Bill Murray confirms villainous role. (laughs) Not really interested in that. No. Bill Murray is going to play a villain? Yeah, not really interested. Whatever. Bill Falcon Murray's and Winter like Soldier star Sebastian Stan unsure when we'll see Bucky Barnes next. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Blah blah blah. But I saw an, another article where he was explaining how much he loved that Civil War fight. I'm like, well, didn't you love that three way fight that mimicked it exactly? And Falcon and Winter Soldier. I wonder why you don't mention that one because it sucks ass. Uh, Matrix Resurrections, flopping means sequels or a spinoff TV series are now unlikely. Good. God. Yes! Victory! Insiders insist no series in development and movie sequels to the Warner Brothers reboot may prove glitchy as well. Keanu Reeves does not have sequel options and it's unclear if Lana Wachowski wants to make more. A wholly unnecessary epilogue to the Matrix trilogy 
Resurrections retreads old ground and delivers mediocre action and proves itself a tough pill to swallow despite a decent enough love story that alone isn't enough to justify revisiting the franchise time for a reboot. Don't say that. <laughs> That's what they're going to do is reboot it. Mm. Solo, a Star Wars story. Amelia Clark rumored to be getting her own Disney Plus series as Kira. I have no Why? interest in that. Why? Why? Because it's fucking awesome, Everett. <laughs> Don't you love when characters have arcs and then we just give them shows that are basically going to be them doing the same arc again? Uh, in a movie, she's like, I'm not even going to bother. And at the end, we'll find out that she actually becomes Kira. That's wonderful. The, yeah. When's John Bernthal going to be in Star Wars? <laughs> I'm a Jedi too. Playing the same exact role he always does. Ben Affleck elaborates on awful Justice League experience and why he decided not to helm the Batman. It was really Justice League that was the nadir for me. That was a bad experience because of a confluence of things. My own life, my divorce being away too much, the competing agendas, and then Zach's personal tragedy and the reshooting. It was just the worst experience. It was awful. It was everything that I didn't like about this. That became the moment where I said, I'm not doing this anymore. It's not even about like Justice League was so bad because it could have been anything. I looked at it and thought, I'm not going to be happy of doing this. The person who does this should love it. You're supposed to always want these things. And I probably would have loved doing it at 32 or something, but it was at the point where I started to realize it's not worth it. It's just a wonderful benefit of reorienting and recalibrating your priorities that once it started being more about the experience, I felt more at ease. Okay. Well, yeah, it seems like you probably shouldn't start with a 50 year old Batman, but. Ben Affleck says the Flash features his favorite scenes as Batman. Confirms it will be his final appearance. Okay. Uh, maybe my favorite scenes in terms of Batman and the interpretation of Batman that I have done were in the Flash movie. I hope they maintain the integrity of what we did because I thought it was great and really interesting, different, but not in a way that is incongruent with the character. Who knows? Maybe they will decide that it doesn't work. But when I went and did it, it was really fun and really, really satisfying and encouraging. And I thought, wow, I think I have finally figured it out. Now, that being said, after, after hearing what you just heard, do you think they kill him? I hope so. He says a really nice finish on my experience with that character. I think he dies 100%. Well, you know, the rumors are that uh, that they're going to erase the Snyderverse. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So he may not die. He may just erase. Uh, no power or force in any known megaverse would or could ever erase Zack Snyder's mighty works. Okay. You can take that quote, take that to the bank, to the press, the blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, so he's responding to the rumor that The Flash will erase the Snyderverse era from DCU's continuity. Okay, I don't, nothing in that quote that he said sounds like, like they wouldn't like do a reboot in the story. Obviously, his movie still exists. <laughs> Uh, Black Adam them. Black Adam action figure listing appears to confirm plans for debut of major comics villain uh, Sabak Sabak? I don't know who that is can't be that uh, can't be that major I've never heard of him Sabak? yeah I don't know I mean I'm sure I've come across him at one point but that's a that's card not. game from Star Wars like who cares uh, Batgirl set photos confirm that Robin is a part of the DCU what does that mean? Hold on a second. The mural is of the dynamic duo. What? What Batman is it? But yeah, there is a Robin in Batgirl, apparently. Uh, let's see. Is this the same picture? Yeah. A Robin exists. It's He's wearing that stupid outfit, though, so I wouldn't... <laughs> okay. Not a great idea. Okay, whatever. Um... Let's see. Let's see. There was something else about Batgirl. Uh, star Leslie Grace. Let's see. A set photo. That's her. She's the lead. All right. <laughs> I guess. Whatever. Dude, this guy's huge. <laughs> He's humongous. Yeah. Um, the Batman action figure reveals our best look yet as Bruce Wayne as the Drifter. I think this movie is going to cover a lot of time. Mm. I'm excited for it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm excited and I have no expectations. Like, I, I don't care anymore. I'm so immune to this and I'm hoping for a good movie and maybe for them to do something I haven't seen before. And what else? 
Uh, speculation that the Batman movie might be delayed. We're certainly paying attention to everything going on with Omicron. We feel good about the date right now. We're going to watch it day by day. Uh, when was it supposed to release? In just a few weeks, really? I think so, yeah. yeah I remember it got delayed to April or something. Are tickets on sale? Or... March 4th? Are tickets on sale yet? I don't know. It's still Check like that. three months away, I think. Or we're a month and a half, basically. It's about time for tickets to go on sale. Because you go, you got fe- it's right at the beginning of March, so you got February and half of January. Almost, we're like a week away, I would say, from half. All right, Michael Keaton explains why he had to walk away from Batman Forever. Uh, it was always oh, this is on a podcast. I might check that out. It was always Bruce Wayne and never Batman that attracted him to those movies. With the director who directed the third one, I said I just can't do it. And one of the reasons I couldn't do it was, and you know. He's a nice enough man. He's passed away, so I wouldn't speak ill of him, even if he were alive. He at one point, after more than a couple of meetings where I kept trying to rationalize doing it and hopefully talk him into saying, I think we don't want to go in this direction. I think we should go in this direction. And he wasn't going to budge. But I remember one of the things that I walked away going, oh boy, I can't do this. He asked me, I don't understand why everything has to be so dark and everything so sad. And I went, wait a minute. Do you know how this guy got to be Batman? Have you read? I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah, good for him. I forgot that Joel Schumacher died. That's uh yeah. That's a death, yeah. yeah. That's one of the deaths of something. <laughs> uh I might check out that podcast though. Backstage. All right, uh Thor Eleven Thunder. Oh, here's the Jane uh Jane Foster. Do you think she might die in this movie? Or do you think they're I'd gonna like use it her if she future? did? Uh, like I thought Natalie should. Portman didn't like being in the Thor movies. Yeah, but obviously she's back. So, like, do you think that I'd like gonna... it if she died? I, I think, think Chris Hemsworth cool. is out after this. No, I think one of them needs to go. One of them has to go. They wouldn't replace Thor with her. <laughs> There's no way. Chris Hemsworth has to. They stay. already did. Her name's Thor. <sighs> I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I don't know. How old is she? She's older than she's 40. I don't know. Um, all right. Morbius release has now been delayed more times than New Mutants. Did they it get delayed it back again? again. Oh. Uh, no, not since we talked. It's the same delay. Okay. That's the movie that got delayed. I completely it's forgot it even existed. From January 28th, so like two weeks away to April 1st. Um, two things. They say January is the worst month for movies. But it's like, well, you already picked January. The other thing is, we don't know why. Is it because of Omicron? Or reshoots? Oh, yeah, didn't they or... want to do reshoots? I think they already did reshoots with Michael Keaton. So who well, knows? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they, they, I don't know. It doesn't say waiting, in this article. Maybe they were waiting to see how uh, No Way Home like happened. And then like maybe they had some ideas for reshoots if it went well. And they're going I think, with those. I think No Way Home um, doing well and them coming out next to No Way Home trying to piggyback off the Venom stuff I think would be their best bet. I think by April, no one gives a shit about Morbius. I wonder if they'll do like some like stinger for a future Spider-Man movie. Like maybe they'll have like him getting teleported or like Andrew Garfield showing up or some weird shit. I, I wonder if it'll end up just being streamed like simultaneously with the release. Like it's so, so fucked at that point. Uh, Black Widow lost an unreal amount of money thanks to piracy caused by Disney Plus Premier Access. Mm. Uh, oh, that picture of Taskmaster is just so awful. <laughs> um, the Marvel Studios blockbuster was pirated more than 20 million times has since moved away from premier access. Yeah, but I don't think that's why it, I think the reason it was pirated is because people didn't want to pay for it and that those people probably wouldn't have watched it if they had to pay for it. See, the thing is, yeah. I wonder it's, though, it's like- It's easier to pirate if it's on premier access than it is in a theater. But I don't understand how they justify this because if you put a movie on streaming, for sure it's going to impact box office, right? It has to. 
Yeah. yeah. The point is though, if like, if you're setting up a service, then subscriptions and payment yeah. over time. Assuming will... that your service is the same company that's making the movie. Yeah. Because Disney gets the money either way. But like Warner Brothers and HBO, that doesn't make like Matrix, like we all watched Matrix. None of us paid for it. So how much of that like money gets to uh, Warner, Warner Brothers? Who owns HBO Max? Warner Brothers? I don't know. Let's see. AT&T. Which still owns Warner Media. Yeah. I so don't know. They, they make their I money back. Um, okay. Everett, you got a game of smart ass? I do. First right. of the new year. So we're starting off at zero points. So you guys are tied at the moment. Um, Emerson, you won. So would you like to start with our first category? Place. Place. Okay, here we go. This location first appeared in live action in 2011. It has officially appeared on screen two times. It has a bluish white color when viewed from a distance. It has been described as a nearly barren wasteland. It's also said that this place began to deteriorate after its source of power was stolen. It was the site of a monumentous battle that ended a war, a momentous battle that ended a war. Jotunheim? Correct. Nice job. Can't even focus. Like, I didn't even hear the first five clues. <laughs> okay. Um, well, all right. What's next? Thing or person? Thing. Thing. Okay, here we go. This thing has appeared across all forms of media, but it is particularly known for its live action film appearances and its fairly recent video game appearance. Its, fir its first appearance was in April of 1963. In the comics, they were, um, they were specifically used to safely manipulate radioactive materials. They are about... Doc six... Ox arms? Correct. Nice job. Oh. Nice. All right. Uh, last one is person. Here we go. This person first appeared in the year 1969. They're one nice. of the most recognizable characters in all my, uh, of all time. They have appeared across all forms of media, but they are best known for their television appearances. They are a mascot of an organization. This person's name appears in the title of a television show. They are not human. They walk on four legs. They have appeared frequently in Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Scooby-Doo. Correct. Nice job. All right. Three for three. Okay. Do you want the extra question? Yes. All right. Your extra question for Scooby-Doo is what breed of dog is Scooby-Doo? Great Dane. Correct. Okay. So starting off 2022, Emerson four points, Kia zero. I don't think I can do it after I spent all that time talking. Yeah, because you talk, especially because of the book versus the movie episode, like you definitely had a lot. Do you want me to like, do you want to like no, switch I don't it know. up somehow? Or? I don't know. I just know that I couldn't, like I really didn't even hear the first five clues of the first one because I was just like, like not talking. Dream, all right, well, we, yeah. can, we can come up with a change if you want. Maybe so, start. So I was thinking, let's outline the end of the podcast. The end. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's let's make a uh, a roadmap. So there are some some like I want to do Lord of the Rings. By the way, do you guys think it's worth for me to read Lord of the Rings like the way I was doing Harry Potter? Uh, have you guys read it? I have. Is it worth reading in order to uh, watch the movies? I mean, it's interesting. I think that the movies are better than the books. Tolkien like rants for pages about stuff. Like he'll like randomly launch into like a poem. So then I'll let you guys be the. Uh, well, the yeah, because I can talk. Experts. I've yeah, read I The Hobbit. I've never read Lord of the Rings. Emerson could probably talk more about that. I've read Lord so of the Rings. So what's the second one called? The second Lord of the Rings? Yeah. The Two Towers? Towers? The two towers. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then return, the of the return of the king. Okay. So I want to do that trilogy. Okay. I should also add that we're going to do, uh, we need to do 
a uh, half blood prince and deathly hollows part one and two can we just mix one and two into one episode considering it's only one book i don't know that's i don't remember the movies watch. and i don't remember the book so i don't know how i'm going to tackle that one yet so we okay so that's six episodes i want to do the godfather okay all of them yes okay godfather two and the godfather three we're gonna do inception as well yeah we'll get to that um and then we want to do fantastic four yep we want to do there's three of them or two of them there's two of them two of the originals and then that other one yeah there's there's two of the originals then another so there's three total three of them okay Uh, um have we done star wars the originals yeah we've talked about them i don't know i don't think we've ever done them i don't think we need to do them to be honest okay do we it could be interesting but i feel like there wouldn't be a lot for us to say yeah i mean i could probably talk for ages about star wars but yeah but i don't know that i would even want to we'll see if that's like a thing later on um we are we did cloverfield didn't we yes Mm mm-hmm um okay i want to do hunger games okay I'm down about that one? Yeah, yeah i'm down to I do like hunger games. games i've read the books and watched the movies so. same here do you think that's one where i should reread the books because i read them when i was a little bit older i would recommend rereading the books. yeah there's a few changes in the books to the movies but... i remember hating the ending yeah that's why you should as is typical because I don't think I don't think that your opinion will change, but I just want to have it fresh in your mind. Because <laughs> since I've read it, hell, I'll reread it again too. Because I want to talk. I, I, you were bringing up a lot of good points about Harry Potter, but I had nothing to add because I hadn't read the book. So I'd like if yeah, I'll do, reread the Hunger Games. That'd be fun. <laughs> the um, podcast is becoming a book podcast. Get fucked, guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Iron Coop Book Club. Okay, that's all the C- oh X Men. Mm. Yeah, we have to do X Men. So X one, X two, X three, X three. Are we gonna do first class or no? What, yeah, well, origins? Gonna... I mean. Yeah, we have to do origins. Origins oh, is a fuck. good one. Right, origins fine. might be a good commentary film. We might skip it. I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> origins, uh, and then there's also the Wolverine. Oh fuck! I'd like to skip the Wolverine. <laughs> first class, Days of Future Past. Did we do an apocalypse? Apocalypse. We yeah, did we apocalypse. apocalypse. Did we do Days of Future Past? No. We did Apocalypse, I think. We could maybe even think about revisiting that one once the time comes. So long we as we don't be... do Phoenix or whatever the last one was. Oh, yeah, we need to do that one. No, we Dark reviewed Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. We don't need to revisit that I'm one. I'm just going to put it on there. We'll see how we feel when the time comes. Because like, if we're going to watch it as a series. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Um, if you're forcing me to watch that one, then we're watching X Men Origins Wolverine. Well, I mean, we'll see when we're doing it if we really want to. Um, there are some other ones. Have we done? We never did Watchmen, right? No. no. Uh, so, Watchmen. Um, you guys have never seen The Hurt Locker, right? I've no. seen Hurt Locker. I okay. have. The Hurt Locker is one we should watch. What about 300? Um, do we ever do 300? I don't know. I'm not sure there's a whole. If lot you're gonna to do like Zack Snyder stuff, then you might as well do Watchmen and 300 back to back. Okay. Um. Ever you said one of your favorite movies is Pleasantville. Yeah, that's my all time favorite. Is, is movie that one we should watch? I would recommend well. watching that movie. I I very much. I've never that seen movie. it. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I don't know. What um, it is how about that's the how Social Wire. Network? Have you guys all seen that? I, I've seen know, Social I, Network. I just recently rewatched it. I think yeah, we should definitely do that. You think we should review it? Yeah, it's a good movie. I'd be okay to review it, especially like in hindsight from like what it's become and like what. We'll see. Mark Zuckerberg has definitely evolved. Meta in ways. Um, there's like I, ha- I mean, whatever. We don't need to review these. So, any other ones that you guys want to add? Inception. All right, the Nolan one. So, Inception. Interstellar. Yeah. Did we already do Interstellar? I don't think so. That was that's an older one. Uh, okay. We did Dunkirk. No. Oh, we did the Prestige. No, we haven't done the. Prestige. We didn't do Prestige. But have you guys seen it? I have of course. Seen it. Prestige is great. Do we need to? I yeah. think we. Well, I mean, I'd watch the Prestige again. Yeah, I would watch it again. I don't think we like. What are we going to say? 
It was really good. Okay, I mean, <laughs> I, I do. Think, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we, there's we, much to say. Yeah, we reviewed Tenant Oppenheimer when it comes out. Yeah, like we'll still do new movies. We can talk about do do we want to like. Um, we gonna do any like Spielberg classics like uh, like ET or Jaws or something? We could do War of the Worlds. Ooh. The Tom yeah. Cruise one. Mm-hmm. You want to? I mean, there's Jurassic Park stuff. If we're too. gonna do Spielberg, that's Spielberg. I would. I think we should leave it here, and then at this See point, right? yeah, because okay. like the problem is, I'm like either watching things I've already seen. Have we seen No Country for Old Men? I've no. seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, that's one of my top ten. Let's go. Th- I still have your top ten. Let's see. Um. So like top our- ten: Dune, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Days of Future Past. I don't remember which order. I assume ten. I, I assume Dune was Everett. Yes, it was Everett. So we have okay. those taken care of. Uh, number nine was Matrix Reloaded, I, Godzilla 2014, have, and The Matrix. I might still have my top 10 somewhere. Did you say The Matrix, Emerson? That might have been me. I said Matrix. I think Godzilla that. 2014 me. was me. The I was Godzilla 2014. Uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. That was mine, I think. Cloverfield, 500 That's Days mine. of Summer. I don't think we need to re- review any of those. Um, Alien, Aliens, Shawshank Redemption. Have we done Shawshank? I think I, think I we said didn't do Shawshank. Have you guys both seen it? I yeah. have seen it once. Shawshank is good. That could be one worth going back to. Shawshank Redemption. Um, uh, Watchmen, Into yeah. the Spider Verse, First Man. These are all there already. Yeah, we've um, social network. First man, Hurt Locker, Lord of the Rings two, American Animals, No Country for Old Men, and Saving Private Ryan, Logan, Gladiator, The Usual Suspects. Do you guys want to watch that? The Usual Suspects is also very good. I I've haven't seen, seen it. it. I, okay, I mean, we can make it's good. That one. It's good. I didn't love it. And there's also Seven. Seven's also good. Have you seen seven, Emerson? I have seen seven, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, this, yeah. Sicario, Inception, we got those. Pleasant Bill, same favorite Ryan times two. Okay, so in our MCU ranking, like, I'm just going to delete it because who gives a fuck anymore? Yeah. Um, okay, so we have 34 movies to do. Okay. All right. And that's not including how many more on um, Tom Hanks do we have to do? So I think there's just, only like one or two, right? It might just be one because I don't even know if that other one was worth watching. The new one, no one talked about it. Yeah, Finch. Let me see. Yeah, the actor. Uh, News of the world is next. There's Finch, Pinocchio. Yeah, none of these are even out yet. So, do you guys want to do Finch? It's got a 6.9 out of 10. I heard like some stuff about it. I don't think it's also on Apple and like, I don't want to deal with that. It's the one with the robot, right? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, can watch it, it if you want. I like, I don't think we need to review it. Yeah. Um, I might watch it on my own, but we'll do news of the world. And, and so we're only talking about movies here, right? No shows or anything. I mean, like, what do you want to do? The only show I would recommend you to watch at some point is invincible. Yeah. And you want to do an episode on it? No, but I think it's something. Well, if we could do an episode on the entire like series, if you want the first season, do you think that's worth doing it? It's good. It's pretty good. I personally think so because I like, I, I've been talking to Everett about this where I think it sits between like justice league and the boys. And I think it sits in an interesting spot. Um, But it's 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 definitely to you if you wanted to watch it. Well, I'll start it and then we'll see if I yeah if you like it. The Just boys season three is coming the out first too episode. as well. So the thing is, um, I need to read, I need to read the Harry Potters. I need to read the first Godfather. Um, I'm not going to read Lord of the Rings. Read Hunger Games. Um, so like we'll we'll like filter those in as I as I finish the books. 
Okay. okay. Um, and then, so that's 35 movies. 35 and more weeks. 35 more weeks plus any new releases. It'll be about a year. And then after that, we can figure out what we want to do with the podcast because most of the new stuff is shit. Like, we just got to be honest about it. <laughs> um, and yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. So that was a long one, I think. Yeah, um, about three hours. Wow. Almost, yeah. All right. So I will see you guys next week. See oh, wait, you next we're gonna week. do news of the world. Is that what you guys want to do? Or, yeah, yeah, sure. News of the world. News yeah. Finish the Tom Hanks off. Yeah. yeah. Let's kill him. All right. See you guys next time. See ya. Yeah. Buy my book. <laughs> <laughs>